Welcome to Statesman, the podcast where we explore all 50 states with our five senses. If you've come here for history, we'll give you some, but most of this is half-baked opinion that is never intended to harm or offend anyone. Diet Coke. Destiny's Child. Dreamcast. Dino Crisis. Don't Cry. Disney Channel. Director's Cut. Doritos Chips. Douglas Commercial. Didn't Curve. Darn Cancer. Dang COVID. Doug Chillin. Data Center. Dilation and Curatage. DC. Washington, D.C., that is. We welcome you to Washington, D.C. <laughs> I'm your older statesman, Tim Ferrari, along with my junior statesman, Anthony Rossi. The hottest D.C. content of 2020. Sorry, Harley Quinn, birds of prey. Wow. And Stuart Highcar. Washington, D.C., the only DC I care about is Dick Clark and his rockin' New Year's Eve. Hopefully tonight's episode is just as wild, huh? Wow. I mean, it's a safari in here already. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> no, everybody is waiting for the record to start. They're gathered out here along the gate. Everybody's wearing dipes. That's right. Yep. They, they've been waiting here for, I mean, some of them the better part of 12 hours just to get a shot of the back of Anderson Cooper. How exciting could that be? Anderson Cooper clinking glasses with Andy Daly at midnight. AC Anderson Cooper, the other half of DC. Ah, yes. Oh, the two kinds of yeah. current alternating and direct. Are we going to get into electricity on today's episode? Honestly, I'm always down to get into electricity. We're always getting into electricity on this podcast, aren't we? This podcast is an electrical medium. Yeah, and, you know, our connections with our guests are certainly electric. I would say so. I, I Sometimes I feel like when we bring on a new guest, it's a lot like, it's a lot like plugging into a socket. You know, mm. at once I was a dark bulb, but once this new, this new guest comes on, I suddenly feel <clears throat> charged up. Hmm. Well, Stu, this, this podcast is certainly your outlet, so why don't you tell us, how, <laughs> how's your week been? Wow, segue of the season, maybe. Um, uh, my week has been great. I, uh, you know, I recently got back from California. I spent some time out there with the old GF. It was very nice. And um, this week has been one of my real proper weeks, you know, back at work, that kind of thing. And uh, it's been good. It's been good. I recently went to Gap today. Um, pretty interesting. And I'll tell wow. you guys all about it. Had to exchange a pair of pants I bought online. Too tall, these pants. I don't know when uh, I don't know when I shrank, but guess what? My legs getting shorter. That's just the problem with online shopping. I mean, you'll never get your measurements right, and it's just a hassle to return things. You say that again, Tim, and I'll I'll come through the the screen and kiss you because really it is a hassle. Here's the thing: even a bigger uh, hassle than that, the hand sanitizer they have at the counters of the Gap store. Smells like straight tequila. No. Whoa. It does. It's mezcal, I think. I, I hate when I pump my hands full of hand sandy and then I have like a flashback to freshman year just getting ill off of a disgusting alcohol. Uh, no shit. Like I smelled it on my hands and like half gagged. Like it does bring back a sense memory. And here's something fun. How about a, a comic book themed cocktail called the Mess Calvin and Hobbs? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so... Um, that's what I did. Got a new pair of pants. Uh, things have been going pretty well. I have a toenail almost falling off, but we won't get into that. Why would we? Anthony, speaking of a toenail falling off, I know you haven't been falling off when it comes to this rap career of yours. Dropped any new hot tracks this week or what are you up to? Yeah, I can't stop releasing content. Everybody's been wondering when another white dude would get into the rap game. And I, <laughs> the answer is right now. Uh, Watch out, prepare. Spillage Village. Here comes Anthony to, to pillage. Prepare, uh, prepare for a forty-volume uh, mixtape series um, over the course of which I break down, <laughs> I break mm -hmm. down themes spanning from religion, uh, <laughs> mainly religion, all the oh, different no, religions. Man. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, forget Listen, religion. What have you been up to? I'll tell you. I've been celebrating. 
because it's a special day, folks. It's our three-year anniversary. What? No, it's not. It's our two-year. It would be our two-year. Huh? Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? We're entering the third year of our podcast together. No, no, yes. Anthony. No, you're one year advance. <laughs> hmm. well, he's he would technically be correct if he had said we're entering the third year of doing the podcast first. Right. But it is our second uh, anniversary. Right. And Everybody you know he loves a classic celebration Absolutely. of the third year of <laughs> podcasting together. <laughs> what? I mean, you know, they say that, you know, the 10 year anniversary, I think that might Maybe that's the China anniversary. There's a brass anniversary, a wood sure. anniversary. Mm. The pewter anniversary, if the you The computer will. anniversary. That is, uh, I believe, the 10 year because one and zero are code. Um, but um, <laughs> what, is, what is the two year anniversary? What, what form does this gift come in? I did say pewter, not computer, but, you know, <laughs> pewter, as in the, you know, pewter <laughs> plates. <laughs> but, you know, computer, very funny joke. There's a computer anniversary as well. <laughs> Guys, one year for each member of this podcast. There's like oh, four well, people on this pod now. Yeah. What? <laughs> there have like always been four people on the pod. Two years of doing this podcast, and we're just now figuring out that Anthony cannot count. Yeah. Huh? It's surprising he's made it this far. <laughs> I knew about the illiteracy, but the enumeracy, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Well, I am I am very happy. Obviously, you know, our anniversary is the most important thing going on right now. Uh, on this very it, day. It's true. <laughs> it's being talked about all over E, all over Soup. Uh, what's yeah, the that guy's soup. name? He's talking about it right now. <laughs> Joel McCall is freaking out on the Soup right now, dude. Everybody's had November 3rd circled on their calendars because it's the third and it's the third anniversary of Statesman. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's election day when this comes out, No. Yes, it is. And, you know, of course, like many Americans, I voted by mail in a very delayed fashion. Wow. Yes, me as well. I, I put my ballot in the mail and I took a picture of me next to the box, assuming that I would at some point have to stand in front of the blind lady justice herself and claim that I mailed it on time. But luckily, luckily, they got my ballot and my vote has been counted. So uh, he, I don't want to, you know, spoil who I voted for. But let's just say... Uh, Wake up, Mr. West. You're late to become the president. You know, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anybody needs to hear this who's about to vote, but Donald Trump's favorite fruit food, I was looking it up today, is a McDonald's fried apple pie. Ugh. Hmm. Why? I don't know. I just, I don't know. You think it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. Those things are hot. They're infamously very hot. Well, mm. let's just let's just go on, on record to say, you know, we it, it, it's awesome that we've landed on this specific not state, but this specific area of the U.S. Mm -hmm. on election day. It's a huge day. Hopefully, there will be lots of change coming. Can anybody say blue wave? Uh, we we want to hear it. We want we want to sing it from the streets, from the rooftops. Uh, all of these people gathered outside to witness this event. Uh, sneak a peek of Anderson Cooper. Wish us a happy third. Hopefully, everybody has made it a point to get out the vote first and foremost. Um, it's a super important election. Not you know, not one that you can really sit out. You gotta just at least you know. You, you got to take part in it. We've got a we've got a big change to mm -hmm. make. Hopefully, I agree completely. And uh, just for for any listeners who are out there standing in line at the polls right now, listening to this hot release of Statesman, stay strong. We're with you. The Statesmen are with you in your ear, keeping you upright and moving forward, closer and closer to that elementary school where you will cast your ballot in the most important election of our time. Hey, Tim. Hmm. Have you felt like we've been leaving you hanging like a certain Chad? How's your week been? Sick. Whoa. Wow, sick. I was just going to say Baba Booby and then move on. But I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, I voted too. I voted absentee in Missouri. Very exciting. Baba Booby, let's move on. Well, let's introduce our guest. <laughs> He's the chillest, cutest boy who happens to be a comedian. Please welcome to the show, Christopher Isaacson. Oh, wait, what is up, Statesman? Uh, I'm so happy to be here. Wow, happy to have you here. It's such an energetic, uh, with a clap. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that was just, you know, I was below the camera uh, for the audience. I guess, you know, we're on camera. Spoiler just for us. Actually, that clap was very, very helpful. Camden's going to use that to sync up our audio (laughs) later. We actually have zero way of doing that. So thank you. Thank you, Chris, for thinking about that before. Yeah. I was saying this to you guys before, but I just want to get it on record for the cast. I am a longtime fan, first time caller of this podcast. So I just want to say what an honor it is as a, as a fan to be here. And, uh, I, uh, I listened to the first, uh, DC podcast today, uh, before, uh, I went on here. So that way I have fresh in mind of what to set the record straight on. Wow. Because Trisha Whoa. Brown had some hot, takes, uh, and I don't think all of them were right. I think that wow. she had a lot of uh, bad views, and uh, I'll, I'll be sure to reach out there before this so she knows uh, that uh, I'm coming for it. But. Chris, you know that Trisha's father infamously was the shadow, the shadow senator from D.C., which means that it's almost like she is sort of royalty from that province. So, I mean, do, oh. you, do you somehow think that you have uh, uh, seniority over her. <laughs> is a true, a true member of DC royalty wouldn't choose her favorite pizza place to be in Maryland. Is all I'm <laughs> saying. Oh, wow! Shots across the bow, Captain. <laughs> Wow, that is so incredible. So clearly you you are a true DCN. What is what's the right term here? Uh, uh, I, I'm, yeah, D- Districtonian, maybe. That's how, Districtonian. That sounds pretty cool. That's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's go with the other word. Uh, would you prefer we call you Colombian? <laughs> oh, no. Well, I'm, I'm just, Hard pass. I'm just wondering. You know, tell us, tell us a little bit about your history in the in the district. Sure. So, was born in Washington D.C. at a all women's hospital, uh, which is now closed. And I was raised in, I was uh, put, my family lived in this neighborhood called Tenley Town, which is near where Trisha uh, lived, and then moved to Chevy Chase, D.C., and then around 12, moved to Cleveland Park, about a block away from where my parents met. So I am true D.C. to the bone. Wow. I bet Chevy Chase DC used to be really fun, but has become a real crappy racist place. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, every every neighborhood I just uh, named is is predominantly white and has a lot of uh, problems <laughs> uh, with uh, racism and all that sort of stuff. So I guess, you know, now I feel like, uh, can we redact the part where I say real DC to the bone? Because <laughs> I feel very not, uh, as they say in Italy, uh, authentico. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They do, in fact, say that. The, the city of spaghetti. But Chris, we're talking not about Italy today. We're talking about a different little boot, the cute caboose of of (laughs) America, the one province that is, you know, always been following the other 50 states eager to join their ranks, uh, sort of like Pluto and the planets. Do you let me hear your take before we really get into the politics of this place? Should D.C. be a state? Yes or no? D.C. 100 percent should be a state. Uh, Everybody who is smart thinks this. Uh, It's been said for a long time. But if you don't know, I just like in a few sentences, I'll just summarize that. D.C. gets, uh, you know, you look on the license plates, it says taxation without representation. We don't get to really make our own laws uh, in the district. So, for instance, uh, we voted to make marijuana legal in D.C. And because there's so much federal property, uh, it's not it's like legal in these like uh, in certain parts of D.C., but not in other parts, like these weird like pockets where like uh, it's completely illegal. Um, like, for instance, like the National Mall, because that's like technically federal property. Like all like there's so many places across the entire you, city. Like, Chris, that. I'm sorry. You're telling me I couldn't smoke a blunt on the fucking reflecting <laughs> pool. <laughs> Unfortunately not. But hey, uh, yeah, and that probably won't change for a while, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> the next guy in the White House is not going to be cool. But he will be better. <laughs> and that's what we're striving for. But speaking of better, Chris. Um, you you lived in D.C. for for how many years? Until I uh, left for college, so eighteen years. Wow. Do you think it got better in that time living there, or did you were you excited to leave when you got to eighteen? I don't know. I feel like I I, I feel like it, there's it's such a progressive place uh, that even though it has problems, like in comparison to other areas of the country, it's like ninety nine percent 
uh, liberal, which, of course, uh, like liberal politics have their own set of issues. But I think that there has been a steady incremental change. But there's also like a lot of gentrification in D.C. So, of course, like there's its own set of problems. So, I, I, you know, I think incremental progress for sure. Different problems arise. How would you describe D.C. in terms of its geography? Because it's kind of sandwiched in between the Maryland, Virginia, you know, it's kind of sandwiched in between like this northeastern and almost south kind of place. Would you describe it as more of a northern city or would you describe it as more of like a southern city? I always thought that it was northern and that like we were like always second to New York City. I've now realized that that is not true. That's, uh, you know, LA and New York are the top two, but as a kid, just because we were close by, which Baltimore and Philadelphia are both closer. <laughs> so I don't know why I thought that. Um, but um, it's sort of its own pocket. You know, I think now I would call it mid-Atlantic, but you know, uh, everyone from the area calls it the DMV for District Maryland, Virginia. Whoa. What was like the major difference that you noticed when you moved away from DC that you noticed in um, New York, upstate New York? Major difference in, in what? Like, I guess maybe in attitudes of people, uh, even in geography. Mm. General vibe. Yeah, general vibe. I did realize that no matter what part of the country you go to, no matter how far north, if you're in the countryside, you'll see people flying Confederate flags. Yeah. Um, isn't that I, interesting that those people are <laughs> somehow everywhere? Like lice, they just spread without, uh, they go to dirty <laughs> heads is what would they say. Mm. I think that upstate New York and D.C. have very similar East Coast vibes. I don't think there's like huge, like more of like a city versus countryside kind of difference. But I will say coming to Chicago, people are a lot more chill here and friendly. Uh, uh, in D.C., there's definitely more of a, a rushed vibe. But there's also so much more culture like uh, in D.C., I think, in comparison to um or at least just because I'm more like familiar with it. Like DC has like its own like genre of music, like Go Go and like stuff like that. That's mm. like so cool. Wow. I, I have two quick questions for you. The first of which is when you went to college in upstate New York, did it feel like a little magic was missing from your life being so far from the wizards? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, I did not. I, I remember I saw one Wizards game my whole life when Michael Jordan was on it. So uh, unfortunately, not. Wow. I can't say I'm a big fan. You really got to watch the best player of all time play <laughs> at his best level. Just <laughs> unbelievable, changing the course of every game. <laughs> My second question, of course, is what brought you out to the Teehee capital of the United States of America, Chicago, Illinois? <laughs> oh, I'm well familiar with the phrase Teehee capital. Uh, I think it's a popular usage. Uh, I, I came out because uh, my good friends, uh, Andrew Ubeline, Ian Iverson, and uh, Grace Kulenschmidt, who you just had on the, the cast, all moved out. And they graduated from Skidmore before me. So I was like, I need to go out and uh, be with my pals and, and do comedy. What a lovely group of people. Oh, truly. Truly. True. All just like kings and queens, each and every one of them. <laughs> royalty, you would say. And speaking of royalty, sort of American royalty in uh, D.C., obviously, the president, the White House, the lawn, the uh, Washington Monument, Senate, House, uh, Smithsonian, all those places. Chris, have you spent much time in buildings of government? Have you taken the tour at the White House? Have you seen the green room? I can't say I have, unfortunately. What? Never been to the White House, never been to the top of the Washington Monument. Chris, what? Have you not even seen the second Spider Man movie? <laughs> I know you're going to ask. I've been to Mount Vernon in Northern Virginia. I don't and give a shit about Mount Vernon and its hidden tunnels where they steal the president from in the second friggin' National Treasure movie? Have you not even, have you seen the Lincoln Memorial? I've, I've seen all the monuments, especially at night. Like, um, it's a big tradition to, uh, for high schoolers to get their prom photos taken um, around there. Like, before you go to prom, you go see the monuments at night. But I've never been inside any of those things. I don't know. I, I, I feel like it, it would be cool, but... Um, it's like when you live somewhere, you don't want to do the touristy thing. I mean, have you been to the Bean? <laughs> yeah, 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 but that was when I got here. Yeah, wow. been to the Bean, but you haven't been to the Washington <laughs> Monument. Wow, what does that say? What does that say, Anthony? <laughs> so obviously, DC is a big, you know, area for young politicos who want to go to college and, you know, butt heads in the streets and at the bars uh, over, you know, their political affiliation. I'm just wondering, were you exposed to that kind of at an early age? Were people around you kind of politically minded or because you guys don't really have a vote? Was it just kind of more like, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the imported folk were the ones that were 
raging on about that. No, definitely surrounded by politics for sure. Um, I don't think I would like, I didn't really feel it because I, you know, grew up so much around it. But I mean, like both my parents are lawyers or my mom used to be a lawyer, but they were lawyers when they met. And which is not politics, but, you know, in my mind, same sort of uh, uh, style. Um, Yeah, people yelling at each other. Yeah. And I went to elementary school with Tucker Carlson's son. What the fuck? Is that kid just a fucking dipshit? Hold on, let's shit on Tucker Carlson's son for a second. (laughs) Everything that's about to be said is hearsay and parody. That's for your parents, Chris. What is up with this dripping nerd? You guys are going to be so upset. I have nothing but good things to say about my boy, Buckley. (laughs) He was so nice. I don't know what his politics are. If he's like, if he's, Buckley, if you're listening to this, I know you're probably a longtime uh, fan and (laughs) potentially maybe one day first time listener as well. Uh, But, uh, you know, I hope that your politics are not in line with your father. But just know that when we were at Julian Cresci's birthday party in sixth grade and nobody else wanted to throw the football at me and you were the quarterback and I was the nerdy kid in, in, in elementary school, it meant a lot. That we scored that touchdown together. Bro, so thank you, wow. Buckley. Shout out, Buckley. How the <laughs> fuck is Tucker Carlson's son the QB of the football team? I mean, that's that's unbelievable. Can you imagine if <laughs> like, an arm. if Michael Jordan's son was like a genius about like <laughs> astrophysics? Like you, it, uh, you're. It's not fair. I don't think personally, <laughs> but fuck you, Tucker, T- Tuck and Buck. <laughs> Great genes. Well, I, I, t- before we move on, Chris, we have one more question for you. Really mm-hmm. easy one. Would you ever return to live in D.C. or would you ever want to leave this mortal coil behind and die in D.C.? Oh, no, 100%. I was, I was telling somebody earlier this week, if I had like the career and the moolah and I could just be wherever I wanted to be and like have people send scripts to my desk, um, I would have... At least a semi permanent location in Washington D.C. because it's so nice, and I miss my old deli. And uh, just to be there for the cherry blossoms is the best. Where would you live in D.C.? I would love to live in my old neighborhood of Cleveland Park, but you know, I, I, I'll, I'll take I'll take anywhere that's not me gentrifying a neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into these five senses of Washington D.C. where we explore this not state with uh, our nose, eyes, ears, mouth, and with our hearts. So uh, we'll start with the smell segment, of course, uh, right? Well, oh no, I think we we've got a game, of course. Mm-hmm. I can't believe I've already forgotten the goddamn uh, format of this show, but who has the game today? That would be me. <laughs> All right. Yes, that's right. Let me take it over, baby, because I'm here to stay. These days, folks need to pinch every penny they can when shopping. So I figured we could help out by comparing prices and telling our listeners about the best deals, right? I mean, this is a relatable problem. We're all trying to save money during the pandemic. And I figured this podcast is listened to by so many frugal folks. Let's give them some great deals, huh? That's why this game is called DC's CDs. In this game, (laughs) I will tell you guys about a great compact disc product for sale on Facebook Marketplace in the DC area. And you'll have to guess the price. What Whoever gets closest will get one point. First to three points wins. Does that make sense? So we're on. We're looking through Facebook Marketplace listings at compact discs for sellers located in Washington D.C. Yes, I am. I specifically search CDs for sale in the Washington D.C. area, and all of these are from that Facebook Marketplace search. So these are all real deals that our listeners can get if they are willing to travel to Washington D.C. to pay for these CDs. Wow. As if my upbringing could give me any help in this game at all, dude. This is going to kill you. You said before the podcast, you're an absolute audiophile. This is That's your so game. True. Hey, that was I, that was off the record, Camden. Can we censor that? <laughs> yeah, just. Censor the first part. Censor audio. Um, so uh, in, uh, in this game, again, it's the first to three points. We're going to go in a circle. You guys are all going to guess the price of the particular CD. I will say none of them are more than $100. So it's, you know, don't go crazy high or anything. And is it Price is Right rules? That's right. If you go over your bust, um, people can fuck each other over like that. But that's the game, and that's why we like to play. So are you guys ready to play DC CDs? Oh, you bet. Yeah. yeah. All right. So our first CD, Van Halen, the best of, volume one. Ooh, an incredible CD. But we'll go from Anthony to Tim to Chris in this first round. 
What is your guess on the price of that CD? Well, I think, you know, if this was a recent posting, of course, we just lost Eddie Van Halen this year. So I think that that somebody is going to be using that to their price point advantage and bumping up the price of that CD, uh, trying to make a little extra green off the sweet, sweet memes we all have. Uh, So I'm going to say $36. Okay. All right. Hmm. Interesting guess. Interesting number. We'll come over to Tim now. Tim, Van Halen, the best of volume one. What do you think? Now, I have to ask, is this an original pressing? Is the first edition, second edition? Is there any sort of detail that would make this all uh, this pressing any special? It has been opened. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Those that are the details g- I have. Quite good to know. I'm going to <laughs> cut Anthony by just about $10. I'm going to say this is $26. 26. Okay. 36, 26. It's coming to you, Chris. How expensive do you think Van Halen, the best of volume one is? Look, somebody's got to call Flo Rida because I ain't going low, 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 <laughs> low, low here. I look, CDs, there's no way you go. You, I see CDs at Walmart and they're like four bucks or like in the bargain bin <laughs> at the back. So, uh, and it's opened and it's just, a, it's not even like a specific Van Halen CD. It's best of. So I'm going to go $10. Wow. Okay. Um, this is a pretty complicated one because, unfortunately, you all went way over the price. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am going to give Chris the point because he's closest. Uh, but just in the future, guys, try and shoot in reality. Uh, <laughs> this one cost $5. <laughs> you said between 0 and $100. Yeah, I know. And that was a trick. Um, so we'll move on to the next CD. We'll go Tim to Chris, then to Anthony on this one. The second CD, The Essential Weird Al Yankovic, Part 2. Another collection wow. CD. Yeah. But, uh, Tim, we'll come to you first. How much does it cost to laugh for almost 45 minutes? You're going to have to give me the track li- uh, Give me the track list. I need to know what songs are on this. It matters, the value. You of know? course. And I, of course, have that information already written down. <laughs> uh, so what I will do is just read it out for you. And, of course, we're starting... Uh, This is part two, remember, so don't expect all of the greatest hits. This is the second one. Um, Let me go ahead and read off the list, which I have written down, and the track listing is... Wow. Okay, this is part one. God damn it. Really impressive uh, riffing, though, Stu, honestly. I got you, Stu. Okay, thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Camden. If you can find it, I am... I just keep finding the essential Weird Al Yankovic volume one. Weird Al's, uh, <laughs> Weird Al's Greatest Hits Volume 2 is a 13-track, uh, 12-track, sorry, volume. Yeah, there's a bonus track on there. Watch out. That's a secret. That's a secret bonus track for fans only. <laughs> Headline News, which is a parody wow. of mm 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 by the Crash Test Dummies, one of my personal favorite songs. Bedrock okay. Anthem, which is a parody of Under the Bridge. Oh, that's and, a great uh, Give It Away one. by Red Hot Chili Peppers. You Don't Love Me Anymore. Um, which is actually an original. Wow. Smells mm. uh, smells like Nirvana, of course. The Smells Like Teen a Spirit classic. parody. classic. Okay. Achy Breaky Song, parody of uh, Billy Ray Cyrus's Achy Breaky Heart. Another good one. Uh, UHF, another original. Mm. Classic. Right. Money for Nothing and uh, slash Beverly Hillbillies, which is All a parody right. of uh, Money for Nothing by the Dire Straits. Real quick, I think he should have changed that title to Money for Nothing, Binks for free, and it's like a Jar Jar Binks song, but uh, whatever, nice. go on. <laughs> Jurassic Park, um, which is a parody of MacArthur Park by Richard Harris um, from the Jurassic Park soundtrack. Mm. Okay. This is The Life, which is an original, but is meant to parody 20s and 30s music. Uh huh. Polka Your Eyes Out, um, which is meant to paradise polka music. Oh, Yoda, okay. which is a parody of Lola by the uh, Kinks. That's a great uh, that one. explains it. They already had a Star Wars one on there yeah. anyway. Camden, what's the last one? <laughs> last but not least, Christmas at Ground Zero, which is an original. <laughs> Jesus, but, Jesus uh, is also meant to parody <laughs> Christmas songs, I guess. Was Weird, Al, wow. Weird Al's touching on 9-11 yeah. in <laughs> volume two. <laughs> what's really crazy is that song is actually like a negative tune about that mosque they were going to build there. It's, I mean, Weird oh Al has some God. crazy beliefs. So, Tim... 
You heard the tracks. You heard the listing. Volume two. $88. What do you think the price? Eighty-eight dollars. Wow. <laughs> okay, Chris. Uh, eighty-eight <laughs> to you. What do you think? <laughs> Look, volume two is clearly not what volume one <laughs> must be. <laughs> I think there were only three hits on that, and there were a lot of originals for it to be greatest hits <laughs> uh, for my personal taste. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say two dollars. Wow. Okay, eighty-eight dollars, two dollars. Anthony, are you going to split the middle at forty-three? <laughs> yes, you absolutely got it right. I am actually no. I'm going to split the middle a little lower, obviously, towards Chris. After last time, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> got to be reasonable. I'm going to say six dollars. Wow. Okay. So can we have a ruling right now? Are prices right rules in effect? We said that, right? Yes. Unfortunately, Chris is taking another round, <laughs> another $5 CD. Wow. Let's go. Wow. I can't believe this. I'm surprised. I really want an, an $80 CD to pop up on this uh, marketplace. I can tell you right now, you won't find it. <laughs> Why did you I say between one and $100? Tim, I was tricking you. Okay. You've been tricked. Tricked or treated, okay? Wow. And now, let's get treated to another round of this very fun game. Chris, we'll start to you, uh, then to Anthony, then to Tim on this one. The soundtrack to Chan Wook Park's 2003 film, Old Boy. Oh my God, where the dude cuts out his tongue. <laughs> what, is the, what is the cost on that? Uh, what's the condition? Um, <laughs> uh, very used. That's what it says. <laughs> yeah, it says um, been passed around the family very much. I don't know if that's a what? reference to the movie or the CD. <laughs> regardless, um, Chris, how expensive do you think? <laughs> it's, if he's charging anything more than two dollars, this person is crazy. I have to go two dollars. Wow, another two. Okay, Anthony, to you, one dollar. <laughs> Wow, okay. <laughs> Tim, you have a chance to absolutely crush Chris on this one. Yeah, $35. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> Tim. What? <laughs> okay, well, the game's over. Chris, three in a row. Congrats. It was $3. Well, I can't believe wow. this. I can't believe this game. I got tricked the whole time. Yeah, wow. I mean... I think we got through some of the best CDs, but uh, all of the prices were between three and eleven dollars. So, hey, um, yeah, I could have probably narrowed it down for you, but a couple of other CDs for sale. We have BTS's "Map of the Soul" seven, eleven dollars, and Sync Celebrity with a twenty-four page lyric poster foldout, and that is free for anyone who can pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Gaga's Chromatica, a sealed new copy, $10. And Space Jam's soundtrack, a rare sealed unopened copy, $3. So, obviously, a lot of CDs are available in the D.C. area. Really fun, really fun game. Chris, congratulations. You really proved to be the audiophile. You keep saying that you are <laughs> and demanding for us to call you. Um, so, congrats on that, and I think we can move on. Yeah, let's move on to our first regular segment where we explore Washington, D.C. with all five senses. But first, we're going to start with our little sniffers. So, today, this is going to be crazy, y'all. I didn't get anything prepared for the smell segment. Huh? What the fuck? So, Chris, normally, obviously, you're, you've are you listened to the show before. Normally, what I do is I ask you to, or I usually get something for you to smell and then we uh, and then we smell it together. Since we're over Google Meet, I uh, you know I would have sent something to you, or I would have gotten something for you, or I even would have asked you to get something, but uh, I didn't do any of that. In fact, <laughs> so for today, I'm um, I've come up with a new segment, and the segment that I present to you today, totally original, it is called Soggy Toss Populi. Where fuck you? <laughs> where we will look and get reviews of certain places based on how they smell. What the hell is this? <laughs> okay, so um, you stole my segment? Maybe no. This is totally <laughs> original and my own soggy toss populi, which means keen senses of smell. People, I am steaming over here, and I hope you can smell the steam because it's piss flavored. I can. Wait, Stu, have you done have you done this exact segment before? It happens in all my sound <laughs> segments now. Vox Populi. It's even a phrase, but let's not get into it. We don't have time. Well, Chris, 
before we get into some of the stuff that uh, some of the reviews of certain landmarks and the sense of the certain landmarks around D.C., I just wanted to ask you, like, what are some general smells that you commonly associate with D.C.? Something that I've found uh, in my research. Uh, my cousin John says that the national sm- uh, the national mall smells like grass. Um, <laughs> sure. The corporate sm- sector <laughs> smells clean and Washington Highlands smells like weed. Um, is there anything else that you would commonly associate with Washington, D.C.? I'd say uh, Tenley Town smells like McDonald's. Whoa. And I'd say that uh, a lot of D.C. smells like a creek because the, uh, Rock Creek National Park runs right through it. And it's a, a legit forest, like unlike Central Park in New York, where it's super kind of groomed. It's like a real forest and there's a real creek running through it. And uh, yeah, it smells like creek in a good way. Not not a stinky creek. Not stinky creek. Fresh creek. I've only known pretty stinky creeks in my time, yeah. I guess. Because for some reason in my head, like a creek has some standing water kind of near it, you know, amongst the rocks. And that's where like the Skeeters fuck and whatnot. <laughs> but um, do you think that Tinley Town smells like McDonald's because Trump oil over there getting his freaking apple pies? <laughs> I, uh, I don't think that. No, I, I would say no, unfortunately. Sorry. Fuck. <laughs> did you ever get um? Did you ever get a chance to take a whiff of those nice cherry blossoms? Oh, absolutely. Those they smell fresh as hell. I'd say I'd say they smell like petals. Like petals, huh? Yeah. Uh, one th- one also thing that I read is that you have a big ginkgo problem in Washington D.C. Is that another true thing? What? What is is, is that <laughs> yeah. a tree? What is ginkgo. ginkgo? Uh, I think it's spelled G I N K G O. It's like a Japanese yeah. tree, right? Yeah, it's like for memory, isn't it? It's like a vitamin. <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, ginkgo is an actual tree, but they're very smelly. Oh, I don't know of any stinky trees. No stinky trees. No, no. There's no. There's not one poorly smelling thing in Washington D.C. Even the fast food. There's a Burger King near Tenley Town where you can sit in a real Batmobile, and I don't know if that speaks to the smell, but I think it's pretty well, cool. Well, Why? I think some um, <laughs> some of the world's keenest smellers are, around the world are going to have uh, a little bit of something to say in. This segment called Soggy Toss Populi. This one is from DK Travel 2 of Syracuse, New York. Lincoln Memorial was amazing, but the reflecting pool was gross. The reflecting pool is disgusting. It stinks terribly. You can walk you can barely walk alongside it. It smells so bad. I noticed this when I was there four years ago as well and thought it was just a one-time thing and that there was something wrong with it, and it would be cleaned. Nope, it is just so gross. I cannot for the life of me figure out why the city would not clean this up. You can literally see the algae in it, and it's so thick. It appears like you could walk on it. We took the sidewalk away from the reflecting pool because we were literally getting nauseous from the smell. Not kidding. Tim. Tim. Yeah. What is the name of that reviewer? DK Travel 2. All right, DK Travel 2, I have something to tell you. We all see what is truest about ourselves in the reflecting pool. That is what makes it a reflecting pool. So you, sir, are what brought the stink to it. When I look in, I see nothing but columns because I'm a supportive person. Wow. Chris, what do you see when you look into the the reflecting pool? I I see a beautiful, handsome boy. (laughs) We see what we want to see, you know? And that dude saw shit. Have you been to the reflecting pool? I, uh, yeah, I've been, there's there's two different reflecting pools, I think, or maybe it's the same one. Is is it the same one at the end of the? I think there's two. May, I think yeah. I'm crazy, but maybe I think I'm a crazy boy. But maybe it's a two. one on each side of the Washington yeah Washington Monument, Washington I mean, monument that, that like that looks up, to the Lincoln Memorial. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And then I think there's another one on the other side, but I really feel, I also feel like uh, a total doofus because usually when I have conversations, they're not being recorded and now this one will live forever. So, <laughs> hey, mist- <laughs> yeah, when I die, you, just play this. Are, are you still thinking about when you said audiophile earlier? <laughs> I I didn't even say it on record. You said it eight times on record and Camden wrote mm. it in blood that the, <laughs> he will uh, fix it for me. So do, do you think that the reflecting pool has a bad smell or do you think DK Travel 2 is a fucking idiot? I think DK Travel 2 is a fucking idiot i don't know i i think it's probably like not the 
the the the stinkiest. Uh, I mean, it's it's. It, I'm sure it doesn't smell great. You stink your you stick your nose in standing water. It's going to smell like doo doo. I think they recently announced Donkey Kong Travel Two for the Nintendo Switch. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Christ! Well, I've got one more. Uh, I've got one more review for the National Mall. This one is titled "Had a Bad Smell" by Elin R of Tartu Estonia. <laughs> Tartu Estonia? Walking along mall, partly under construction, walk was long and hot. Most disturbing thing was smell. I don't know if it was some toilet somewhere, but it smelled really bad. <sighs> Estonia. How hmm. dare we present this as our capital to our Estonian friends? I, <laughs> I will say the mall is like Times Square of DC. Like it's going to be the stinkiest place. Hmm. Yeah, but a uh, but toilet somewhere? <laughs> How Do are you, you gonna have a toilet somewhere? Toilet somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> I will say it's ironic because the times I've had to go like use the bathroom or get water the most in my entire life has been on the mall because you're just surrounded by like just trees and grass and you have to walk like twenty minutes to get to anything you need. Mm. Here's a question. Um I, I, I don't know if maybe you saw this, but I know it's kind of a famous site to see on the National Mall. You probably spend a little more time there than any of us. Um, have you seen that one guy in like a tan overcoat handing a manila envelope to the yellow M M&M? M? <laughs> he, he um no he gets the he about. gets the envelope <laughs> and the guy says like here's the file and he goes no this is an envelope oh, have you seen okay. that uh, is he there I, all the time i or? have seen this ad <laughs> oh no i think it's it happens there i mean i just have you seen it i haven't seen it in person though hmm. but okay <laughs> I, I am attracted to the green M and M. I just want to get okay, that. Thank you for saying yeah. that. <laughs> I, that might have been the first time on the podcast that we said the word "file" without audio in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is an audio file. <laughs> um, Sam, what, what else you got? You got anything else? Um, uh, according to a, uh, this was you know a last bit of my research, I suppose, and sort of related to DC. But according to a 2017 article of L. Uh, former President Obama smells of history and coriander. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they have that. I, and it, they even say at the very end of the article, but this is speculation. So I don't even know why you would include that in an article. I'm, I'm happy that you hit on this topic because I really quickly just want to see who, which president does everybody think smelled the best and which president does everybody think smelled the worst? Who's the one that died in a bathtub? Taft. 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 Yeah, that dude. Yeah. <laughs> he, smells worse. he probably didn't smell great. I don't think he died in a bathtub either. I think he got stuck in one once. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be crazy if the president of the United States died in a bathtub. <laughs> he drowned in an inch of water like a baby. Like, no one was watching Taft. <laughs> Confirmed uh, Taft died in his bed of heart disease. Yeah. Uh. Kind of boring. Good for him. Camden, can you Camden, can you edit that part out? <laughs> um, I think I think best smelling is probably Jimmy Carter. I have a feeling that he smelled pretty good. He was like mm. a peanut farmer, and I think he probably like I don't think he smelled clean all the time, but I do think he had a particular kind of BO that like, you know, Rugged. I mean, yeah, all of our boys know this. There's sometimes you get that kind of BO that just make you friggin' bone up. You know what I mean? And then the mm. worst. The worst smelling president, I'm getting a lot of nods of yes on the screen. Um, the worst smelling president, guarantee it's the first one, right? Like, I feel like each president <laughs> must smell a little less worse than the last just because of yeah. time. But George Washington had like rotten, haunted slave teeth in his mouth. Like, he, yeah. can you imagine his breath? Yeah, that would have mm. fucking sucked. And you like don't really shower and not, you're like wearing like six layers in the summertime. Yeah, you like wear that undershirt thing that's like pants and an undershirt that you like piss yeah. into or whatever. I don't and know you gotta, history you too. You gotta well. like kiss. Yeah, like kiss him every day. With, like you gotta like right. make it good. You Absolutely. Gotta, like, get, like, well, you gotta kiss the president. You gotta take his teeth. <laughs> if you're not kissing the president, you're gonna get arrested. I'm gonna kiss the president so hard, I'm taking the breath out of his lungs. <laughs> and he likes the freaky stuff too. So you gotta, you know, you gotta slurp yeah, it around. Suck. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you, you, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta ride the whirlpool. Oh boy. Well, you know, that's all for Soggy Toss. I've been pronouncing this wrong. Sagaki Toss Populi. And the end of my smell segment. Christopher, 
we're going to need to rank this out of something, this smell segment. And it looks like Stuart has a suggestion. I have an idea, and feel free to shoot this down because I know a few people in the room know more about this than me. But I've been doing a little bit of research, and it seems like the highest quality uh, audio recording you can have is at 320 kilobytes per second. Uh, Camden, (laughs) does that sound about correct? Yeah, sure, Stu. Okay. <laughs> what do <are> you <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not gonna um, bore our listeners with the gritty numbers. Okay. Well, uh Anthony I'll... can't count. Have some goddamn <laughs> 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 Okay. Well, this is uh, obviously Chris, you know more about this than me, but um out of the 320 kilobytes per second of a perfect waveform <laughs> that I'm sure you love to see, how many kilobytes per second did uh, Tim's segment earn? First off, isn't sound metal measured in decibels? What are you even talking no, about? I've, I've already Shut revealed up. myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. It seems like, I think that if I didn't know like that it was so impromptu, I would give it a higher score. But because of that, I think I'll give it, I'll give it a, a um, like 70 kilobytes. 70 kilobytes? <laughs> 70? Jesus, out of, out of 320. 320, you're giving me 70? My fucking God. Well, I know, I know the bar that you guys can hit, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Tim, <laughs> look, you, you came up with a great idea for a segment. That was really fantastic and creative. Fuck you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what an original idea. I, I do have to say, though, I'm pretty pissed at you that you couldn't think of one damn thing we could have snuffed on. I'm, I'm sitting here in my bedroom right now, <laughs> and it smells fantastic. I wanted something that, that transported me, you I know? Mean, we, we should say Chris did bring an object from D.C. to smell. Should we... Should we have him just do it before we fully move yeah, on? Yeah, that's totally true. Chris, what did you bring us to smell? So this is my comfort object from home. This is my dad's uh, college blanket from Redlands University. Where he went wow, to that's where the Redlands sweet. grow. What the hell? Um, and it's it smells it smells like the old dusty house I grew up in, and my mm. and, and lying on my father's belly while he read me comic books you growing up. You cannot Aww. replace smells like that. I know exactly what you mean. Not at all. Mm-mm. I lost my I lost my baby blanket two years ago, and it was the single greatest loss in my entire life. So tragic. Now you said your dad was reading you comic books. We all have to ask. Were those DC comic books? <laughs> Some of them, for sure. My dad was like a, and I am as well, big comic book nerds. Like, we, you go up to the attic, we've got like stacks on stacks on stacks. So we were doing, uh, shout out all the comic files uh, listening right mm, now. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, Justice Society, Justice League, Mr. Miracle, uh, all the good DC yeah, stuff. Yeah, those are the top three. Camden, <laughs> did you have something to add? Yeah, I just wanted to say before we move on, um, I'll bet Chris got really excited about the petals on that uh, cherry on those cherry blossom trees because um, he spent so much time uh, smelling the petals on Ian Iverson's pedal board. <laughs> He's such an audio <laughs> Wow, what are we, Camden? It's a joke for everyone. Who, uh, a joke for like forty a minutes joke for ago. One person whose name is Ian Iverson. Shout out Ian Iverson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What's our next wow. segment? The 26.2 mile long joke, a whole marathon. We're going to move on to our next regular segment where we explore not with our noses, but with our eyes. Anthony, why don't you take the eye presentation away? All right. So I want to preface this. I went into this expressly remembering that I basically included nothing but like monuments and mall shit in my previous presentation. And given the fact that it's election day, I know everybody's got politics on the mind. I wanted to see something a little deeper. I wanted to plunge deeper into the identity of DC and see what else I could find in there. Now, let's see if that proved to be a fruitful effort. Mm, Fruitful. Now, are you ready? (laughs) We're psyched. Chris? Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm, I got distracted by Tim's water pouring out of his mouth. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm so ready. Though. All right. All well, right. Anthony is sharing his screen, which means he can no longer see us. He can only hear us. So if you have any reactions, Chris, <laughs> mostly negative, I assume, just make them out loud. <laughs> smiling. I'm smiling. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, I've got it pulled up here, and you can see, of course... The iconic opening slide. Now, Chris, can you break down for us what we're seeing here? 
Uh, it's Washington, but the S the, in Washington is a, the number two. I assume because it's the second Washington DC episode. You're correct, Anthony. Why didn't Why didn't you put it Washington? Like, t- there's a T O <laughs> in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because I just did that. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, we just did. you did it for the other Washington. Oh, you were backed into a corner on this joke. I see. Yeah. <laughs> also, I want to say insane that you guys had Gray School and Smith and Eric Rahill and then no name comedian <laughs> Christopher Isaacson. Well, Chris, I was a huge, a huge letdown for anybody who's consistently uh, listening to episode after episode. What you what you don't know, Chris, is that uh, the episode that hasn't released that's coming out before yours is actually it's a Leno. massive, uh, a massive musical artist with a huge online following. So um, <laughs> who who is it? Uh, it is. Fraxium, a uh, hyper pop superstar. Love them. Uh, but let's look, let's stop talking about our other guests. This is for Washington. Tony? Yeah, please stop derailing my segment. I worked <laughs> very hard on this and I'm ready to move on. Here we have the license plate. Now, this is the most current version of the license plate that was represented online. And It is essentially just a white background with two red lines through it. Uh, And then at the bottom, it says end taxation without representation. Up top, it says Washington, D.C. And then in the middle of it, in between the letters and the numbers on this particular uh, license plate, there's an equal sign with three stars over it. Not sure exactly what's going on there. Maybe just, you know representing the flag abstractly. I don't know if that means something else. But, Chris, is this the license plate that you would see driving around, scooting around in front of you? It's actually very fitting that you chose this image because this this is uh, the license plate my car currently has. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to the DMV to get some Illinois plates. Whoa, so. Chris, you're you're going all the way to the, the District, Maryland, Virginia area? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to um, say to that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, maybe this will help. Um, on the license plate, for all our listeners at home, uh, the, the license plate number is FN9713. It could only be more interesting if those numbers were FN2187. Stop. Of course, Finn from <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Wow. Make a song about that, weird Al. <laughs> now, how do you how do you feel about getting your license plates uh, replaced? Do you feel emotional about it, or are you ready to move on? No, I really didn't want to do it. And uh, my uh, housemate, Bridie, super cool. You guys should all check out her music. Uh, uh, she uh, doesn't have Illinois plates, and she's from California, and she's never gotten a ticket. Uh, not don't dox her, I guess. Uh, anyways, I didn't want to get mine, and uh, my mom just is giving me a really hard time about it. So, and I put it off Damn. for a really long time. Do you know? Mama knows best. Do you know if you'll get to keep the license plate, or is it turned over to the state? That's a good question. I do have, regardless, I do have another DC license plate that is like an old one that's in my bedroom. So, it, whoa. I, I, I guess I love. I, I guess I love the plates. What can I say? Is that a vanity plate that you have hanging up that says very cool or some shit like that? No, it looks like the one that we're looking at, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, or maybe it's like a vanity plate that says Rose Tico, but the I is a one. Tim, Stu, (laughs) we've seen a bunch of license plates now. I'm wondering, how do you think this one stacks up? You know, I think this one is, is boring. I don't really know if there's much to say about it. I'm kind of confused about who is who were the ones writing in taxation without representation? Yeah, I I agree with you because it does feel like the people who would design this this license plate in some way are in a place of power in the government themselves. So it's like you do it, you should do it. We if everybody drives around cars that have a political message on them, like literally one hundred percent of the people, shouldn't they just do it? I don't know if there's correlation between people who make the plates and people who can make that law. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I've always seen that people who make license plates are presidents, right? <laughs> Am I wrong about that? It's certainly not prisoners. Really true. Yeah, under Obama, it just said, cool city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I have nothing to say about this license plate. Kind of boring. B minus, two out of 10. Those are very different ratings. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, if you 
if you look at this license plate, are you transported home? Not by your car, of course, but just by the image itself. Do the colors <laughs> evoke the feeling of walking the streets? It actually does. And thank you for clarifying not by my car, because I did get tripped up there for a moment. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the blue, the, the specifically that shade of blue really takes me back to... Uh, my my youngin days, and uh, uh, and I do love the 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 DC flag right in the middle. Um, that oh, yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what, the, what I don't is. know if you were doing a bit, but the, no. yeah, it's the DC flag, which you and I I thought you were doing a bit because you, I was just listening to the previous watching D, DC episode. Uh, smart listeners will listen to that one and then this one. Uh, but uh, you gave it such a hard time. You said it was super ugly. And I am here to uh, absolutely uphold the DC flag and say it's a beautiful piece of artwork. And uh, especially compared to the Chicago flag, the Chicago flag, I think, is a piece of shit. Uh, wow. And uh, I think this one is gorgeous. That is a, a rare take. See, wow. that just doesn't make any sense to me because they're both just lines and stars. So what's your yeah. defense? Uh, great question. I think that the, the shade of blue that the Chicago flag uses like this weird kind of like vineyard vines yeah. like teal uh, that I really don't buy blue but, bullshit yeah let me let me ask you Chris uh you you mentioned the blue on this license plate is something that brought you back to the to your childhood let me ask you about this new shade of iPhone 12 Pro Pacific Blue. What do you think? What are your thoughts on it? You're a tech guy. I have no idea what shade you're talking about. If, it okay. just, if I'm right. just like picturing a, a, a Pacific Blue, I guess it sounds like teal again, and I don't really like it. <laughs> you're wrong there. Much darker. Anthony, you have a picture of the iPhone 12 Pro Pacific Blue in this podcast? Yes, of course I do. It's coming later on in the slideshow, but we do cool. have to move on because the next slide is not one quarter it's three quarters. Well, four quarters. <laughs> I had to include a shot of the front as well, so no one would be thrown off. Um, but here are the three different artist renderings of the proposed uh, quarters for the, not state, but, you know, the district. Uh, wow. So here are the options that were presented. Here's a little history on that. In 2008, the U.S. Mint rejected the original proposal for a D.C. quarter because it included the phrase taxation without representation, which was deemed too controversial. The citizens... What? Of, the citizens... Of, <laughs> people would have freaked out. <laughs> literally, the whole country is based on that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the citizens of Washington, D.C. were then asked to vote for their favorite of three options the first time they've ever been asked to vote. <laughs> One, <laughs> the, first quarter, <laughs> the first quarter depicts the famous abolitionist Frederick Douglass, who lived and worked at the historic Cedar Hill home for the last 15 years of his life. The second quarter depicts Benjamin Banneker, who was the son of a former slave who was born free and taught himself to become a mathematician and astronomer and wound up writing some of the most famously accurate almanacs. He was actually hired to help scout the location for the city of D.C., making him an absolutely important part of its history. The final quarter uh, depicts Duke Ellington, who was born and raised in D.C., a jazz legend who died with 13 Grammys, a Presidential Medal of Freedom, and countless other awards. Now, you can see on the screen right now which quarter wound up winning, and I want to know if you think they made the right choice. Chris, which would you have voted for? Did you get the chance to vote? I did not vote in this uh, particular election. For quarters, I'm, I did vote for the uh, presidential election. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, but I think they did make the right choice. I think that um, Frederick Douglass and Benjamin Banneker are both awesome choices as well, and I would have been thrilled if they um, won. But I think that it's always cool when uh, like money is like uh, has like modern... Uh, like figures on it. Um, but I think that uh, all truly awesome choices. I, I think I agree with you. I think the Duke Ellington quarter is the most interesting. Not that, I mean, like, uh, I am split between the Duke Ellington quarter and the Frederick Douglass yeah, quarter saying. because if I'm honest with you, like, they, I can 100% understand their impact. And like, the third one, Benjamin Banneker, good on you, dude, for designing the city. But like, if he didn't do it, someone else would have, <laughs> you know? Like, there aren't, other people like Duke Ellington and Frederick Douglass, like waiting in the wings to become those people. I think they're kind of one of a kind. So I don't know. I, I think I'm with you on that one, Chris. Tim, you have any feelings on these courts? You know, I can't wait until we vote again on some of these quarters and some more modern artists are on because with the way that this quarter is kind of squished in its format, 
it makes Duke Ellington look really skinny and kind of taller. And I'm waiting for a Snoop Dogg quarter, honestly. I want, I, I want the Avicii quarter. Avicii quarter. <laughs> Avicii. Um, yeah, Avicii quarter needs to get in here. The Steve Aoki quarter needs to arrive. And uh, the Hakkasan quarter, I would love to see as soon as possible. I appreciated you throwing out the uh, Avicii quarter. That's a joke with some levels. But unfortunately, <laughs> we have to move on to the next slide. Now, a slice of your hometown here, Cleveland Park, located in Northwest DC with an estimated population of 6,838. Oh, sorry, 6,837 since you left. And <laughs> we have a we have a vibrant downtown scene here. There's cars zooming back and forth, uh, and there's just tons of life out there. People are all over just have the time of their lives. Can you break down a little bit what what uh, we're seeing here? All right, I'll give you I'll hit you with three major landmarks. Um, so uh, if you look at the tallest little like purple flower here in this image, um, there's like a there's like a, a brick building in the background. It's got like a green kind of spire. That is Sam's Park and Shop, America's first strip mall. Uh, and then behind that, those big buildings, it's an apartment complex in which every year around this time of year, it's spooky season for Halloween, a large migration of bats visit. And you can see them swirling around. And then over to the left um, is the Uptown Movie Theater, this big uh, building on the left. And uh, it is one screen and it has a balcony inside. So it's a really great place to watch uh, movies. And it recently... Unfortunately, just shut down. I hope that another movie company buys it. And also, I just want a quick shout out to my favorite deli, Vache uh, Pizza. Wow. Deli. Now, Tim, what, for your smell segment, were there any reviews for Uptown? Because I've heard about that Uptown funk. It's quite infamous. <laughs> you know, I didn't. But uh, if you want, I can look up a, a sweet review. <laughs> no, no time. We. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just I just have something like really important. To, to do on this slide. And I am sorry to take this up, but I just need you guys to support me while I go through this. <clears throat> he lives in Cleveland Park Jesus and he Christ. is proud to be an audiophile from Washington, D.C. Wow. <clears throat> as soon as Stu started that bit, I started going, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hey, look at that. We got two Clevelands on the podcast. What's oh, that? boy. <laughs> well, we've talked about it a little bit already on the podcast. Could we guess what's coming up? Do you hear a faint babbling? What is that? It's Rock Creek Park, of course. A national park established by an act of Congress in 1890. This makes it the third national park ever established in the United States behind Yellowstone and Mackinac National Park. It covers over 2,000 acres of land which extend from northwest D.C. to connect with Maryland's Rock Creek Stream Valley Park. It features a horse center that has been operating since 1972, a water-powered mill called the Pierce Mill, which has been around since the early 1820s, a myriad of famous bridges and trails, an outdoor concert venue, and several sports facilities. It draws millions of visitors per year, and as you can tell, it is an absolutely beautiful park. We have a nice stone bridge here covered in moss, and, you know, the babbling, babbling stream, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Chris, do you think this is a good shot to represent the state park? I I was uh, it's so funny you asked that. I have literally never seen this particular bridge before, so uh, I actually have to say it's not. Well, but I love Rock Creek Park. <laughs> Chris, I wanted to ask you in particular. I mean, Anthony mentioned famous bridges. Are we talking like Jeff and Bo? Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. That one really hurts. Yikes. Okay. Um. <laughs> so you ever make out in this park, Chris? <laughs> I've never made out in Rock Creek Park. No, I, I I made out in Cleveland Park, but never never in Rock Creek Park. Um, I will say uh, the rapper Odyssey from uh, DC has a really awesome uh, concept album called Rock Creek Park that really just sums up the whole vibe of it. It's all instrumental. Maybe he'll want to hop on my Buddhism mixtape. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can wrap together, but I'm curious. You you've spent time here, no? You've walked oh, through and, and explored. 
my house is in Rock Creek Park. It's this weird location where like it's in the forest. We have like one street light on our block. So it's actually really scary at night. Um, but yeah, no, I love Rock Creek Park with all my heart. Grew up in the forest, essentially, even though I was in the city proper. Um, and it's huge. It, you could walk around it for days. It's it's the best place to go. There's so much moss over here. What do you think of all that moss? Did you ever grab a handful? No, I don't. Again, I don't know if this is actually a photo of Rock Creek Park or not. It if is. I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, taking kind of an aggressive tone with me. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean this this park absolutely full of moss. Probably probably see Elizabeth and Kate in there somewhere, huh? <laughs> or maybe even a uh, Vermont's own Sam Moss. Ian Iverson would know something about that. <laughs> wow, another throwback from the ultimate memory, Anthony. <laughs> Please move on. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a lot less out of this than I thought we would, uh, especially considering that there is a horse center that's been open since 1972. Have you ever gone on a horseback trail ride? I have not. I've always, I've seen that horse thing you're talking about, but I've never, I, I've like, I think I've only seen a few people actually on horses. I think it's like a pretty scarce thing because it's uh, where it's in the city. Hmm. Okay. Also, I want to apologize to our listeners for confusing them. Of course, when I said state park, you know what I meant. Let's move on to the next slide. <laughs> okay. It's not a state. All right. <laughs> Here we have the Tidal Basin. <laughs> it's a 107-acre partially man-made reservoir that serves as a centerpiece of West Potomac Park. <laughs> Uh, Chris, what do you what do you think's going on here? <laughs> what do you say? Every, for everybody at home watching, I just have to explain the image that <laughs> Anthony has pulled up. It's a picture of the cherry blossoms, gorgeous, at the title basin, and uh, there's a, 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 the title like Jay Z title logo is in the corner, and then there's Hove himself on a jet ski ripping through. Uh, I love the title basin. They have those paddle boats in the background behind uh, the rock uh, himself, and um, they're a blast to be on. It's packed. Yeah, I mean, everybody's coming out to see Jay-Z rip on through. On, Of course, the day that the, the partnership was launched. Um, but let me break this down a little bit more for you. So this is the centerpiece of West Potomac Park, which also holds the Lincoln Memorial, the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial, the Jefferson Memorial, the National World War II Memorial, and more, if you can believe it. The basin also actually has a practical purpose, it's a drainage point for the Washington Channel. Streaming channel. Uh, <laughs> it releases approximately... What even? <laughs> it releases approximately 500 gallons of water per day. That's a lot of water, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay. Uh, it is also the site of the National Cherry Blossom Festival, which we talked a little bit about earlier. It's a spring festival that celebrates the cherry trees that were gifted from the mayor of Tokyo City to the city of Washington, D.C. in 1912. Now, here's one unfortunate uh, you know, piece of history. In 1918, Congress opened a whites-only bathing beach on the basin, and the racist-ass senators blocked plans to open another beach nearby. And in 1925, they actually chose to remove the beach altogether so they would not have to desegregate the area. Wow, truly a perfect metaphor for why racism is stupid for everyone, whites included. You don't get to have your stooping, no one gets to use it anymore. Just fucking, God, that sucks. I also, I can't believe that these trees are still here. If they were a gift from Tokyo's mayor, like in 1912, I can't believe 30 years later, like uh, that Pearl Harbor didn't change, like make us feel like we got to get rid of these trees. I feel like that would be, would have been a reactionary thing I would have 100% believe would happen. I can't believe that Anthony managed to find a transparent die-cut PNG of Jay-Z on a sea -Doo. Yeah, this is his best uh, Photoshop work yet. Normally, you get to see the full, like, white cube around the PNG that he's trying to put into a photo. So, good work, Anthony. Yeah, did you, hey, do, a proper, so much. Did you do a proper crop on this one? Hey, they did a proper <laughs> crop when they planted those trees. <laughs> I think they're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Some of the most gorgeous foliage in all of the, all of the United States, huh? Absolutely. I will say one fun fact, personal fact about the uh, uh, the Tidal Basin is that uh, when I was uh, fifteen or fourteen, I did a spy camp at the Spy Museum, 
and they had us do a mm-hmm. mission out on the tidal basin in in the paddle boats, and there were like little bottles with messages floating. Whoa, the spy museum slaps. Yeah, it really yeah, spy does. Spy museum rules. Hey, who, hey, who here has been to the spy museum? Wait, wait for that. Wait for that. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, that's classified. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on. Unless anybody has anything else to say about my nice image work. I just nope. feel like we didn't really get to talk about the spy museum. We're getting there. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> All right, but we won't get there quite yet because first we have to see the United States National Arboretum. Oh my a 446 God. acre <laughs> botanical collection and research center established in Northeast DC in 1927. It includes several gardens, an herbarium with over 800,000 specimens, a library, an archive, Sculptures, including the National Capitol Columns, which are 22 Corinthian columns that actually used to be included on the Capitol building itself. Uh, And more. Lots of trails. Uh, It's also, (laughs) super interestingly, home to two bald eagles. Does anybody know the names of these bald eagles, Chris? I have no idea. I've never been here before. (laughs) Oh, shit. Uh, (laughs) Can anyone venture a guess? It is DC themed. Um, I'm going to guess that they are named District and Columbia. Good guesses. Thank you. Tim? I think White House. White and House. (laughs) Chris, you got to do better than that. You're local. (laughs) You're right. I'm going to say, we'll say Dave Chappelle and (laughs) um, (laughs) Obama the president. (laughs) Wow. Full title. (laughs) Camden? (laughs) I'm not going to throw my hat in the ring on this one. Just tell us what it is. (laughs) Just tell us. Fine. It's Mr. President and the First Lady. (laughs) Caca. All right. I'm going to give myself partial credit. (laughs) Wow. To be honest, yeah, the eagle has landed. What is the the night? Oh, because you is it Imperial City? Is that why you photoshopped a knight in the corner? Yes, of course. You know, Tim, maybe you can help me out with this one. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about gardens, but I only see one guard here, Anthony, an Imperial City <laughs> guard that is from Oblivion, the fourth edition oh. of the Elder Scrolls series. Hail, citizen! Another great PNG from Anthony. Anthony's skills have just been skyrocketing ever since we got to the District of Columbia. I'm really proud of him. Thank you so much. You know, of course, I had to include that because whenever I hear the word Arboretum, I'm transported to a specific area of the Oblivion map, my favorite (laughs) video game. Okay. If you're interested in hearing more about the Oblivion nope. series, you could, <laughs> or the Elder School <laughs> series, you can hear me talk about it on Geek Out, another podcast. Guys, what do you think of the shot? You, Chris, you said you've never <sighs> been there, but do you wish that you had after seeing this image? It's absolutely gorgeous. I, I, I do agree with you there. They really they got this one clearly at the magic hour, and uh, it really paid off. If they, if they got up early, that is. you know, Going there for late magic hour, any, anybody in Joe Schmo with their phone, uh, their uh, camera can do that. <laughs> Perfect sentence <laughs> achieved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to go. Is that answer your question? <laughs> Honestly, these columns, look at those, look at those tops, Corinthian, beautiful curvature, absolute incredible uh, craftsmanship on those columns, but they don't hold anything up. Where's the roof? Mm. Looks like it was raised a little bit too high. Yeah, I think I was going to say what confuses me is that it looks like an old, like excavated Greek temple where like the top has fallen off, but it's clearly made in the past hundred years or so. And they just, there's just no roofs, just columns. Do you guys think it's kind of funny that like so much of DC architecture is built around that idea of like Roman columns and like white marble buildings? But like, you know, historians have found that like all those buildings were like painted very bright, crazy colors and stuff. And the marble was just like the stone they used to build them. Right. So like imagine if we transported, I don't know, your average Greek from the year fucking negative 2000. Do you think they would laugh at our boring ass city? Anyone Boring can answer. Boring ass city. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. It just seems harsh to invite somebody on to talk about their city and then <laughs> slander it like that. <laughs> hey, well, I'm not a Greek. I'm not an ancient Greek. I'm just saying others might think it's a boring ass place. Anthony, what's next? All right. Well, let's move on. You know, <laughs> of course, of course, if you transported a Greek to or a Roman rather to to Washington D.C., they'd say. <laughs> Washington, and then there's numbers? 
Let's move on to the next slide. <laughs> DC are numerals. Um, how do you not know normal numbers, but you know <laughs> Roman numerals? The National Gallery of Art, a free museum located on the National Mall. It was originally established in 1937 and offers a massive collection with over 75,000 art pieces. It was originally set to be a part of the Smithsonian Institution, but after a trial for tax fraud, oh, ta <laughs> sorry, a trial for tax evasion, former Treasury Secretary Andrew W. Mellon decided he would use his trust's collection to open an independent gallery, stealing the name from the Smithsonian. It is the second most visited museum in the United States behind the Met, and it is the 10th most visited museum in the entire world. Wow. It features the largest mobile ever created by American sculptor Alexander Calder. It features the only Da Vinci or Da Vinci painting in the Americas. Thank you. And works by the likes of Pablo Picasso, Jackson Pollock, Roy Lichtenstein, Henry Matisse, and Andy Warhol. As you can see, it's, you know, it's a beautiful museum. It's kind of stark and industrial, but it, it has a lot of like bright colors in the space. And, you know, it's vastly well attended. Chris, you gotta have been to this museum. I've definitely been here and it does absolutely slap. It's a it's an absolute great time for your day. And that mobile in the middle is really cool. Cause it also like, it moves around. Like I, they've got it on like a little, a little slight motor or maybe it was just like a draft in there, but it, it's cool to see. Yeah, it's a kinetic Left sculpture. A window open. <laughs> 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 How about that uh, that beautiful Giacometti uh, walking man statue we see there on the third floor? Pretty beautiful work, eh, Chris? Yeah, I, I, it took me a second to notice that, but you're right. That is pretty cool. I like. Yeah, that. right here. <laughs> what can I say? I like. Yeah. I like. And I don't know if this one is free because you. I, I I didn't realize that it was independently owned, um, but I do love any place that has uh, living, breathing trees inside. Mm. Yeah, gotta love it, Tim. Of course, this is aspirational for you. One day, your paintings might be in the halls of this museum. How do you feel about that? Hey, where's the food court? <laughs> I don't want hmm. my paintings in a museum that doesn't have a food court. <laughs> hey, listen up, duty heads. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not putting my works in anywhere that don't got a friggin' P.F. Chang's walking distance. You know, there there probably is a food court, but unfortunately, there may also be a toilet somewhere. Oh, wait, no, I see the Terrace, <laughs> the Terrence Cafe. Hmm. Cool. You, you, you had it with Terrace. <laughs> Guys, what do we think of this? Do you think it's cool? Yes. I don't know. I wish I could see a little bit more of this mu museum. This atrium really isn't doing it for me. It's got beautiful open ceiling, but I don't know. Where's the draw? Hmm. Probably on a canvas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> we've been we've been leading up to it, and it's been hiding from us surreptitiously. But now we get to it, and my computer is frozen. Where? <laughs> uh oh, um, that's such a classic spy museum move <laughs> to hack Anthony's computer and stop us from seeing it. What was the keyboard shortcut that worked before? Control Tab. Yeah. Okay. Command Tab. Command Tab. Okay, let's try this then again. Go back to it. Hi, guys. I can see you. Yeah, we've all been uh, pretty unhappy. Oh, is that true? <laughs> I'm sorry. Where is it? What no, the fuck? you're doing great. You're doing great. Just going to want to hit its PowerPoint down at the bottom. Hold on. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and here it is, of course, the International <laughs> Spy Museum. Opened in D.C. in 2002 and relocated just in 2019 to a much larger location. This museum offers a collection of over 750 artifacts from throughout the history of espionage. This is the largest such collection in the entire world, spanning from the origins of spycraft in the Egyptian and Greek empires through modern day. So maybe if you transported a Greek person <laughs> to it, they'd say, oh, I recognize some of this stuff. <laughs> It also <laughs> offers educational and cultural uh, programs and workshops. In 2009, they ran a special event called Spy in the City, which pitted participants against each other in a spy-themed scavenger hunt throughout D.C. that incorporated the use of fun gadgets. Very cool. Chris, you participated in a summer camp here, and you had the time of your life. Can you tell us a little more about that experience? 
Absolutely. I was the oldest boy at uh, the summer camp. Uh, yeah, it, it turns out, Ouch. you know, when you're 14, it's not exactly the most popular or cool Ooh. move to go to spy Whoa. camp. Ouch, dude. Um, but uh, it was so much fun. Um, we got to do, every, like, they had, like, they have this thing there called, I don't know if they still have it, but they definitely used to have a thing called Operation Spy. That was essentially an escape room. And it was yeah. before there were, like, any real escape rooms or anything. You would like, and it was way more immersive than any. any I was, I'm a freak for escape rooms. Uh, you could call me an escape room file, uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it like starts out with like you're in the back of a van. The van, it's like a fake van. It like moves around. And you like crawl through sewers, and then you like do a bank heist. Really cool. Whoa. Um, but they also, and we also got to do that thing where you, that you mentioned, where you go around with like it was like kind of like a proto iPhone, and you're like hitting up these locations mm-hmm. that are real in the city. But they also the coolest thing when I was a kid, or two coolest things, is that they have like the like the OG uh, James Bond car, like a replication of it. So like it transforms when like fake guns pop out and stuff. And then they also um, they have like vents like up in this one section where you can crawl through them like when you're a kid, and it like tells you how loud you're being. So you can like make sure that like you know you're being quiet enough if you are a real spy. <laughs> That's so cool, Chris. You're mentioning so many of the cool things about this place, but I see something that's cooler than cool. It's ice cold. <laughs> do you see what I see? I do see, and honestly, I didn't register with me at first because Anthony, you just put it at like the perfect angle, but it really is just a square picture of <laughs> screenshot from Austin Powers where he's cryogenically frozen. <laughs> I thought for real that was there. I like saw it and I was like, damn, look through that door. How did they get that thing? I thought it was Jermaine Clement. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh. Well, guys, of course, the main attraction for me is this this pea coat. What a cool coat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of pea coat, that's what uh, uh, Washington used to wear <laughs> under his clothes, right? Oh, God. <laughs> Remember when we said that? So. Chris, when you were running around the city with the spy kids, what were you what were you thinking to yourself? Were you thinking I'm going to be a spy one day? No, I was more focused. They had a they had a, a competition where because um, the whole thing was called Operation Beat the Heat. Um, DC gets super hot in the summer, and uh, if you went up to any working personnel at the spy museum and you said, um, "Man, it's really hot outside," they would go, "Well, then I suggest you beat the heat," and they would give you a UV bead, like those white beads that, uh, when they're under sunlight, they change color. And the person with the most beads at the end of summer camp got like it was like a it was like a fifty dollar like it was a nice prize. It was some kind of gift card or something. And um, Damn. Uh, it was such a cool camp. We got to go to the FBI headquarters and watch them shoot Tommy guns. It was insane. Whoa, what? <laughs> but, Holy shit. Yeah. Um, but uh, at the end, I had the most beads because, of course, I was the oldest kid. And just like, as soon as I realized like, I could just do that with anybody, I would just run around and uh, just use my, my, intelli- my superior intelligence to beat all these six-year-olds. Uh, <laughs> my superior intelligence. <laughs> but then one of the six, like all the six-year-olds banded together and like gave this one kid all their beads. So he had like over 100 beads and I had 60 beads. And I remember I technically lost because the counselors gave this kid even though like it was a big controversy, like some kids were booing, some kids were like, "No, like he's the rightful heir to the gift card." <laughs> but I remember like most fourteen year old move ever. After this one kid won, uh, I remember I just stood on top of my chair very proudly and held my beads up with like a stone face on. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, Chris, uh, defiant. Can I ask you? Is there a chance that maybe that kid in the class who everyone gave their beads to was? like really lonely and needed a win and you were like furious that the class was trying to give it to him. I just didn't, I, there were like two other kids I talked to that were like 13 and 12. And so I didn't, I didn't know what the social dynamic was at the camp. So I think honestly, I was the loneliest kid at that camp. <laughs> Pretty brutal. Yeah. I am so sorry. Uh, but it should just be said that uh, Operation Beat the Heat, also the plan of the Lakers in the finals. Pretty funny. Um Camden, you have something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to know what uh, it was like to be chaperoned around D.C. by uh, Thumb Thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a Thumb Thumb is. I'm going to use... Spy Kids. Oh, I'm gonna Spy use, Kids oh, reference. Yeah. I'm going to use my Thumb Thumbs t- to move on to the, the final slide here. And let me warn you, it's a doozy, and I don't want to receive any hate for it. 
Chris, why do you break down every little piece of what we're seeing? What? Um, woof. So this is a wash. <laughs> Wash me whip, wash me DC, a monumental slide. There's a lot going on. There's 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 nine different photos of people all jerking <laughs> off the Washington Monument, and then there's a a, a, a screen grab of um, Ellen and two other people, and they're hitting the whip. But there's over Ellen's face is the DC like uh, comics logo, and then George Washington's face over somebody else. I'm. I'm pretty sure George Washington's face is over then candidate Hillary Clinton. Absolutely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> Hillary. Jesus. Also, I, I just want to say, not all nine of these people are jerking off the Washington Monument. Some of them are just doing the classic tourist pose of holding it up. That's true. Yeah. But what they don't know is that's what the Washington Monument likes. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, just so everybody knows at home, there is one picture where it's like one man and he's on his back and he's shooting his crotch up to the sky. And there's two middle-aged women who are pretending to jerk him off like his dick is the Washington Monument. And they're making like cheeky faces like, like a finger on their mouth. And the guy, they're all loving it though. Like the guy has the biggest smile on his face. Wow. <laughs> Guys, what, uh, you know, Tim and Stu, Camden, what do you think of this slide? I, man, I, I truly I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Is this one that you fully made, Anthony? Because the Wash Me Whip, Wash Me DC, a monumental slide looks like a YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> like the <laughs> and, like, <laughs> it is one that I fully made. I, I fully make every single one of my final slides, and it's wow. a great point of pride for me. Mm. <laughs> Shouldn't be. Mm. All right, well, that was the slideshow, and we're all burning to know. I'm just joining the meeting once again, and I am, of course, covered in sweat as always. Chris, where am I at on that kilobyte scale? I'll give Out you... Of- yeah, 320. 320. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you put my neighborhood in there, so it's hard for me not to give you a, at least a 300. So I'll give you a 300. <laughs> what? Okay, great job. Wow, okay. <laughs> you know what? Fine. Wow. 300 out of 320 kilobytes of what? Fidelity of a wave file, is that it? That's correct. Yeah, it's the high... The high quality stream, I assume, Camden. And speaking of high quality streams, that pea coat we saw earlier, very funny. <laughs> oh my God. Well, <laughs> we're going to move on to our next regular segment where we explore not with our sniffers or with our eye holes, but with our uh, uh, tongue, tongue buds. So I haven't prepared anything today once again. Uh, you know, just hard stuff at this coding academy. Don't really have enough time anymore. But what I did find in my research was something that I did not find on my last go around of my research with DC. And Chris, I was hoping you could tell us about what the hell a half smoke is. Oh, I'm so glad you asked him. So they're famously served at this place called Ben's Chili Bowl, which you can see in the Wale featuring Lady Gaga music video for Looking At Me. Um, And uh, he's on top of the roof there. But uh, it's kind of like, I'd compare it to like a kielbasa. Like it's, it's, it's a sausage and uh, it's traditionally served with chili on top of it, like a chili dog. It's really good. Okay. So are, are there any, like, differentiations between, like, a typical chili dog? Or is it is it the beef that makes this this thing not a chili dog? I'm, I'm honestly not sure about what the actual ingredients are um, in it. I know that I, visually I know it when I see it because it's really mm. long in comparison to a hot dog. It sticks out the bun, and it also has that thing where it's cut down the middle— so it kind of like splits open. And also the fact that it has chili all over it, that's such a DC thing because of Ben's Chili Bowl. Yeah, just like pornography, you know it when you see it. <laughs> right. And just like this half smoke, it is kind of like a, it is sexy food if you do take a pic, if you do uh, get a look at it. I'll read you the ingredients right now. Similar to a hot dog, but usually larger, spicier, and with more coarsely ground meat. The sausage is often half pork and half beef, Smoked and served with herbs, onion, chili sauce, and on a hot dog bun. Honestly, that sounds pretty fucking good, but also really disgusting if you go to the wrong place. Hmm. 
Sure. And I don't know what Ben's Chili Bowl is like now, but it, it used to, and this was, they had the sign at least long after they should have taken it down. But it used to say only people that eat free here are Barack Obama and Bill Cosby. So, <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, it actually wow. used to have a, a mural of Bill Cosby yeah. on the side. I, yeah, I don't damn. know if they've taken it down. or Again, I, I'm not sure. But I, I remember there was one time somebody, I think, wheat pasted a, a, a Kim Jong-un's face over Bill Cosby. Like when all the, like when he was getting all the media attention over Dang. like just the fact that he's a rapist. Right. Dang. What a, a tough, tough mural decision. But have they replaced those murals? Do we know? I don't yeah. know. Oh, or Anthony. Yeah, I was going to include it in my slideshow before I found out that Tim was preparing us a half smoke. Uh, of course, I'm sorely disappointed now that I removed it. But I believe they've replaced it with a mural that has Barack Obama, Duke Ellington, and for some reason, Prince. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Sure. Kind of a Minnesota guy, yeah. famously. <laughs> Interesting. But it's a cool mural. It's very colorful. So are there more than one Ben's uh, uh, Chili Bowls around? Or is it that only one right next to the Lincoln Theater in the U Street Corridor in Northwest D.C.? I'm pretty sure it's just that one, but there is one at um, Ronald Reagan National Airport. Ah, okay. Be honest, Chris, be honest. What is which one's better, the actual location or the airport? <laughs> I mean, and do you recommend that I have a big chili dog before I get on an airplane? <laughs> I think the actual one is better. Although I would value the experience of um, uh, getting absolutely loaded on a Saturday night and driving to the airport just to get a half smoke, <laughs> get buy a ticket onto a plane, get past security, return the ticket afterwards. So where else in D.C. would you normally go for food? Uh, like, what are the hot spots that you go to? You say that you really love your local deli. What yes. is it about your local deli that is so good? Vache Deli, truly, you ask, like, anybody who, like, grew up in Northwest D.C., they'll, they'll tell you about it. It's the best deli in the world, I would say. It, like, especially, I mean, that's, like, a, a debatable thing for sure, but, like, DC definitely and like like Lido's pizza like what Trisha was talking about that's like what you that's like Detroit fucking style pizza that you get like after your like basketball game at the Jellif Rec Center like he, like Vache pizza is where you go to get a fucking steamy pie when it's just you and your boys and you're gonna go play Mario Kart in the basement that night it's and you get a fucking XL pie and they put the sauce over the cheese and I'm I'm like dogs with everybody that works there. It's like all these like older Filipino ladies that are like the nicest people in the world. <laughs> um, shout out to everybody who works there. They're the, the sweetest people. It's authentic, like um, like it's like an authentic like Italian grocery store as well. Like it's got like you know all sorts of different like canned goods, and they make all their pasta in house. You can buy it frozen. It's just the best. So this sort of seems like a good place for us to send our Greek time traveler maybe for lunch. <laughs> Sure, yeah. They do Sicilian okay. style pizza. So, what else do you get from your local deli besides uh besides pizza? The local deli that I used to go to on Long Island was uh they used to have a oh god, this like egg and bacon and cheese sandwich on a Kaiser roll that I just would piss my pants for right now. I don't know if this is what you, what you guys do, but I, I first off, I can I can like I eat like a fucking hog. Like I eat a lot of food. Um and um I, whenever I go home, I like just eat exactly what I ordered when I was like 16, which is like not the most like uh, taste bud wise, like the most sophisticated. Um, so it's really just two slices of pizza, either cheese or pepperoni. And then I get like a big Italian sub with just like, just like a turkey sub with just like turkey, lettuce, tomato, mayo, and that's it. Pretty, pretty interesting how little you have changed, Chris, because famously when we were, you know, training together at the now Dead and gone IO Theater. Chris would get two pieces of pizza practically every time we had That's a class. True. He'd eat one on his way to the class and he'd eat the other on stage. <laughs> uh, true? You know, it was pretty cool. Not, it was pretty cool. Not on stage, but in the <laughs> class, definitely. It just takes a while to. Whole Foods pizza is so dry. You can't, like, yeah. you know, I, I would love to be like Joey Chestnut and just dip it in water and shove it down my gullet. But the, the truth is, you know, a lot of people will, you know, cancel you for that kind of stuff. So <laughs> yeah, you gotta yeah, play it cool in this sure. culture. Eating it on stage at, at now defunct IO, what was that? Zip Zap Za? <laughs> oh my god okay i want to see if joey chestnut could uh you know you know swallow a couple half smokes probably mm. a bit of a thicker Easy. larger sure. spicier than a hot dog 
But that's uh, light work for Joey. Also, something I just want to add while we're on the food is something that's very popular in DC that I, I uh, very shame to say I've never tried is mumbo sauce with wings. It's mm. a it's a style. It's like I've never had it, so I I feel guilty to say you know not a true. Washingtonian move. That's the term, Washingtonian. There's a magazine called Washingtonian. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, it's like supposedly like a kind of like tangy barbecue sauce. It's also served, uh, it's like you get it from uh, Chinese restaurants and it's like supposed to be like, you know, traditionally like takeout only. Or not, not the restaurant is only takeout, but traditionally you eat it with like in like a styrofoam thing with your chicken wings. Yeah, you order it off the menu and it's the number five, right? I don't know. <laughs> never had it but i'm sure i remember they talked my one of my favorite shows ugly delicious they talked about no it. he it, anthony is trying to make a joke about mumbo number five <laughs> mambo number five you know what we just the, need I'm to move to, on <laughs> out of this segment we need to wrap up the show pretty soon um so i need out of 320 kilobytes of a beautiful perfect high fidelity wave function or waveform tell me chris how many um, bits am i getting I'll you, you half half smoke is a is a super legit thing. I'll give you another three hundred. Wow, what <laughs> a three hundred kilobytes out of three hundred and twenty of a perfect waveform. I gotta say, I'm proud of that one. Not so proud of that seventy. In fact, still pissed and resenting it. But you know, we'll move on to our next regular segment where we explore not with our noses or our eyes or our mouths, but with our ears. Stuart, take the sound segment away. We're running out of time, time, time. And guess what? We're not going to waste anymore. Camden, hit it. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, 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 Bill. Bill, Bill. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Science rules. Okay. <laughs> I think we get it. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? Inertia Bill Nye the is Science Guy. Of matter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. God damn. I thought it was still playing. Bill um, Nye, the science guy. Bill Nye, the science guy. Very famous. Born in D.C. Nye got his degree in mechanical engineering before moving into the aerospace field where, here's something I didn't know, he invented a hydraulic resonance suppressor tube used on 747 airplanes. Anybody here know anything about hydraulic resonance suppressor tubes? Mm, I don't know. Don't suppress me, though, bro. <laughs> Absolutely not, bro. He's been nominated for 23 Emmys since then, doing his uh, incredible Bill Nye the Science Guy TV show uh, from Disney. Uh, I think we all probably watched it growing up. It was a uh, a great source of information that also seemed very fun for children. Uh, been nominated again, 23 Emmys. He's won 19 and is the honorary CEO of the Planetary Science Coalition, which is uh, involved in research, public outreach, and political advocacy for engineering projects related to astronomy, planetary science, and space exploration. He was also on season 17 of Dancing with the Stars, which is funny because the show has star in the title and he kind of likes space. So Chris, have you ever been near Bill Nye? I ha- I've met Bill Nye. I got, a, I got a photo with him, um, and uh, I hate this. I hate to burst everybody's bubble. I he I think he was irritated, not be at me, but when we met, because there were a lot of people want to take photos with him, and I asked him for a photo, and he said, "Yeah, sure, okay, let's do it." And we, we took a photo together. And he was like, "All right, who's next?" Did <laughs> it I was instantly uh, just shoved up. I don't fault him, you know. He's still he's still the science guy, but it, you know, it's, it, no, don't meet your heroes. I would not fault him either, but here's the thing. My dad has also met Bill Nye, and he was an <laughs> asshole to him as well. <laughs> yeah, I've actually heard that uh, uh, in several, like you know, in several celebrity encounter, like you know, threads or whatever. People are always saying, "Never meet Bill Nye." <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Stay away. He's from listening Bill Nye. right now, and he's a single tear is rolling down his face. Oh, I hope <laughs> he's listening. Not. That would be so cool. <laughs> Camden, I was just wondering. It's possible that he could have been a, in a bad mood. Would it have been um, in early 2017 after his appearance on Tucker Carlson's show? <laughs> no. <laughs> were you hanging out? Were you hanging out backstage at Fox Studios with Buckley? Me and Buckley have lost touch. He, <laughs> he went to an all boys school for high school, and I went to a, 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 a co-ed. I bet Buckley came out even better after that four years of all boys education. Buckley, strong kid. Buckley, if you're out there, we want to talk to you. We want to make Washington, D.C. three with Buckley Tucker Carlson's I son. I definitely don't want that at all. <laughs> Tim? Honestly, without Bill Nye, Buckley might not have known 
the uh, the arc of that football that he was throwing to you, Chris, because... Uh, exactly. Yeah. Simple geometry. <laughs> Bill Nye taught us that the world is made of science. Isn't that true? <laughs> Anthony, Tim, did you guys ever have any Bill Nye-related, uh, I don't know, dreams as a kid? <laughs> Oh, I certainly remember, you know, avidly celebrating when my science teacher would be hung over and wheel out, you know, uh, wheel yes. out the classic TV and pop in a Bill Nye uh, and have that be our class session. Um, and a lot of people would kind of use that as an excuse to talk, but I was always paying rapt attention because I just thought there was it was such fun material for kids, super entertaining and like super digestible. And uh, very exciting stuff, but yeah, uh, disappointing to <laughs> disappointing to learn that he's not the nicest person. Yeah, well, I've had dreams about Bill Nye, but I would call them nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll take that, and we will move on because I don't think we're we're getting any. <laughs> any better. And the end of the show is coming nigh. So, uh, Camden, why don't we go ahead and move on to our next uh, uh, audio segment, which I will say, much more hardcore. Yeah, well, as Bill Nye gives us good brains as adults, this band is known as Bad Brains. Yeah. Hell yeah, Tim knows them. That was I against I. Bad Brains, an American punk rock band formed in Washington, D.C. in 1977. We got any Bad Brains fans in the audience tonight? Yeah, Bad Brains! <laughs> All right, this guy, he's pretty revved up. Well, they're widely regarded as among the pioneers of hardcore punk, but they also slide into reggae, funk, heavy metal, and hip-hop. As a four-piece African-American punk band in the late 70s and 80s, uh, Bad Brain sort of paved the way for uh, uh, a lot of folks who look like them into a genre that was pretty exclusively white because, you know, screaming and getting angry like that on stage is definitely like sort of a white privilege sex pistolsy thing at the time. And so they took that and sort of uh, made it for everyone. And are, I mean, they're rad. If you have never watched, there's a great uh, full length concert, like an hour long Bad Brains concert from CBGB's in like 1983 or something. And it is absolutely insane. These dudes are wildly talented. And, uh, and I'm taking this directly from Wikipedia, they became successful for playing more emphatically than any of their peers. These guys put 110% on the goddamn track. Now, they did leave DC after an official ban on hardcore musical performance in the late 70s and hit it big in the early 80s. New York hardcore scene. Tim, you look confused. Official ban on hardcore music? Unofficial ban on hardcore musical performance. It was like a soft ban on venues essentially allowing... Uh, wild performances because I think there was some sort of like injury related and a, like somebody sued somebody and then it was like you can't have these crazy shows at your venues anymore and so they left the city and moved on to New York where the lights are brighter but the hits are harder isn't that right Anthony absolutely you know they followed the they cl they followed the classic Chris Isaacson track DC to New York <laughs> that's right that's right. Chris, uh, Bad Brains have released nine studio albums, broken up and reformed multiple times, that have permanently defined a genre. Do you know anything about them? Yeah, I, I, I can't say I, I would call myself a fan of, as a listener, but you know, as as a Washingtonian, I, you know the, what they what they and just hardcore hardcore music has done for the city uh, culturally is you know there's a huge impact there and. Um, uh, well, a lot of my friends were huge hardcore fans in high school, and there were I know that there were a lot of basement shows that I never went to. Uh, that was like a, a weekend thing for a lot of people. Uh, Porter Street, which is a street that runs through Cleveland Park, is famous for having like a lot of DIY basement shows uh, for yeah. like high schoolers. And you know, like Henry Rollins, the lead singer of Black Flag, is from the right. DMV. So huge oh, yeah. hardcore scene uh, in DC. So shout out hardcore. Fugazi. Yeah, exactly. Sure, we talked about them on the first mm -hmm. episode. It's it's crazy how like I guess it's this like perfect dichotomy between like the prim and proper DC political etiquette and then like just insane go as hard as you can, bleed from your eyes, crazy hardcore music. I I think that's such a cool 
I don't know, comparison or differences about a city. But anyway, Bad Brains is currently on a list of upcoming inductees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and are current and are, uh, are often cited as the inspiration for tons of uh, punk rockers around the world. Tim is currently pretending to deep throat a pen. Um, pretending? Not sure if he just doesn't care about these rockers or if he's upset that we're about to move into the Vox Populi segment. That's right, Vox Populi, the people's voice for Cleveland Park. Vox Populi, the segment that was around before whatever Tim's was called, like Slosh. What kind is of it? weird that you would actually take my idea, but it's actually Saga... <laughs> I always pronounce it wrong. Sagaki toss. Soggy, soggy something. You kept on saying soggy. Sagaki toss populi. The original okay, segment. Well, this segment won't be soggy at all. It'll be crisp and to the point, if you know what I mean. So, Chris, I'm going to tell you about some classic destinations in your hometown, and you're going to make the first sound that you associate with your place. So that can be a sound effect out loud. That can be a, a word you say out loud. That can just be like a, oh, you know, like whatever whatever comes to your mind first is what I want to hear. And then we can talk about why you chose it. So cool. uh, before we start, thank you to TripAdvisor <laughs> for their top 15 things to see in Cleveland Park, D.C. list. And a special message to TripAdvisor. Please sponsor this segment, you knock-kneed, wig-wearing rich kids. <clears throat> so our first location <laughs> in um, Cleveland Park. The Smithsonian National Zoological Park. Always free of charge and open 364 days a year, the Smithsonian's National Zoo sits on 163 acres of Washington, D.C. land. Founded in 1889, the zoo is currently home to more than 2,700 animals, representing more than 390 species. So, Chris, first sound that comes to your head when you think of the zoo. I'm going to go for uh, the sound of the lights. In the wintertime, they do zoo lights. And it's Ooh. free to walk through. And that was always way more fun than going to the zoo. But I've seen a lot of shit at that zoo. I've seen a lot of, a lot of monkeys eating their own shit. El- elephants, like, digging up the butts of other elephants with their trunks, eating and that shit. Like, the animals is- there, are, I don't know if they're treated poorly, but they're all, like, the animals are not meant to be catching zoos, you guys. Yeah, I agree. And a lot of the reviews uh, of this place that were one star also had that opinion where they were like, I enjoyed the zoo, but zoos are ethically uh, terrible. And I tend to agree with them. However, I wanted to highlight one specific uh, review of the area uh, that seems to have a much more ominous feel to it. Now, remember, this review was written uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, so long before the pandemic. Arrived around 1 p.m., not a worker to be found. Not really any guests around either. Also, not sure where the animals were. (laughs) Only saw the panda. Don't get me wrong. He was worth the trip. But where were all the other animals? (laughs) All shops were closed and the place was deserted. One star. Is there a chance this person went when the zoo was closed? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it sounds sounds like... Especially if they saw the panda, because the panda is... I don't know what era panda it was, but growing up, my panda was Taishan. And it was impossible to see Taishan. You had to wait in a, a real long line. So the fact that he only saw the panda <laughs> tells me that he broke in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good to know. It sort of felt it felt scary. It sounded like somebody was writing a review after the rapture, and they had been <laughs> left behind at the zoo. Um, so uh, what, what, you know what? Let's just go ahead and move on. We got to hear the buzzing of the zoo lights. But Chris, here's another location from your hometown: the Hollywood Museum and Gardens. Okay, nestled in the hills of Northwest Washington, D.C., uh, Hillwood welcomes visitors. Uh, it might be the Hillwood Museums and Gardens. It might have autocorrected to Hollywood. Regardless, let me tell you about it. Uh, welcomes visitors from around the world with its gracious hospitality. There you can explore the pristine mansion, dine at the cafe, and enjoy the beauty of the formal gardens. So, Chris, this is a beautiful estate. Try looking up Hillwood Museum and Gardens and tell me what you see. It's definitely not Hollywood, and I am sorry about that. I kind of fucked up. It is Hillwood. I'm looking it up right now. And I, 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 I don't think I've ever seen this this place before. And I'm sure my mom is going to listen to this and, and be like, you, we've been there before or something if it's if it's nearby but I, I okay well Chris Chris I'm going to take on the voice of your mom for just a second <laughs> the vox of your mother and go but Christopher what's the sound oh. you think of when you hear it whoosh whoosh for, for the wind that goes through the branches in the garden <laughs> of course <laughs> yes yes very yeah, good this is really close to my home in DC and I guess I've just never been there 
Yeah, it's like right downtown and it's one of the top things to see in your your little hometown neighborhood. So I, I am surprised. I thought it at least would be a place where you would maybe take the a special lady in your life to look at the, I don't know, the formal gardens hey, and you, make a you, formal you, proposal of marriage. You, you find me one worth taking, I'll take them there. <laughs> yes, sir. I've, I've heard that. I've heard that. <laughs> well, let me hear a one-star review from Hillwood uh, Museum and Gardens. <clears throat> Avoid at all costs! <laughs> Although the grounds are beautiful, it's not worth dealing with the cuckoo staff. <laughs> so, cuckoo so that's, staff? I don't know what happened with that one, but staff there. I was hoping that Chris could clear it up for us, but he's never been there and knows nothing about it. Yeah, I, never, I haven't been there and I don't know anything about it. You're looking pretty bad compared to our last DC guest, Chris. <laughs> no, I'm looking good because because I didn't choose Lido's pizza. <laughs> Trisha Brown, you, if you're hearing this, fuck you. <laughs> do you uh, do you think that person might have uh, might have accidentally gone to the zoo and interacted with some of the animals? <laughs> <laughs> the staff here's crazy and unshaven. <laughs> um. Let's move on to our final our final location in Chris's hometown, and I'm really hoping that you've been to this one, Chris, but I'm going to be honest, the more we hear about your childhood, I'm thinking the odds are near zero. <laughs> um, this location, Atomic Billiards, uh, found in downtown Cleveland Park <laughs> on Connecticut Avenue, this local pool hall has all the thrill of a dirty, dingy dive bar, but none of the scary characters that you might expect in Washington, D.C., or the scary characters in Congress. So, Chris... You ever been to Atomic Billiards? And what's the first sound that comes to your brain? The first sound is, whoa. Because I've, it's the only place in Clean Park I've never been to. Chris! <laughs> I've walked outside it a million times because it's 21 and up. It's like the only bar bar in the neighborhood. Uh, and it's in a basement, too. But it always looked like really fun. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it seems cool. They have a cool mm. sign out front. Hmm, well, I'm sure that there are certain theorists out there who would tell you to stay away from any basement in D.C., especially. Jesus <laughs> Christ. But <laughs> let's get, uh, let's move on really quickly. Let's hear a one-star review about Atomic bill Billiards. Um, this person, <laughs> I really like this person's review. Atomic Billiards, more like Atomic Wedgie, because that's what it feels like walking into this bar. If you're not a regular, and trust me, you don't want to be, then don't come here. They're mean and rude and kind of gross. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just an honest, like, child's review of a 21 and up bar. Um, lo love the love the power, love the power. Um uh, so, uh, Chris, that was the entirety of my Vox Populi segment. Please, uh, I, I need to know. Uh, we've, we've listened to scientists. We've listened to hardcore punk artists. And we've learned that maybe you're not from Cleveland Park at all. And I need to change my Cleveland uh, show theme song from earlier to say he does not live in Cleveland Park. But out of 320 kilobytes per second, what is my... I don't know, record fidelity? I'll give you I'll I'll give you 200 because <laughs> okay. <laughs> because uh I feel like there's so many awesome uh rappers from uh DC that we're not touched on. I was going to bring up I mean last episode we talked about Genuine um and uh, obviously Wale is from your your neighborhood, we mentioned him as well. But, from my um, neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, he's from your house uh, as well. So, But yeah, I agree. There just was not enough time because we had to talk about the Hillwood <laughs> Estate and Gardens or whatever the fuck That's it's called. Actually, so, uh, yes. owned by uh, the former CEO of uh, General Mills. Uh, she also owned Mar-a-Lago way back when before Donald Trump bought it. Whoa. Whoa. Well, that's interesting connection. DC really filled with a lot of these like uh, politicians. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, hey, Stuart, <laughs> I'll pick on. up the pieces where I'm supposed to. Great job on your 200 out of 320 kilobytes of a perfect waveform fidelity audio file like uh, Chris is. But we're going to move on to our last regular segment where we explore not with our noses or our eyes, or our tongues, or our listeners, not you across the mic, I'm talking about our ears, we're supposed to explore Washington, D.C. now with our hearts. We're going to go around in the circle, starting with Anthony. 
to Christopher, to Stuart, then to myself to talk about how Washington, D.C. makes us feel. Anthony? Washington, D.C. Not much has changed about my opinion on Washington, D.C. from our previous record. I still have the same problems with it uh, that I did back then. Um, You know, obviously, uh, it's an area where politicians have been complete filth uh, and a lot of terrible, terrible decisions were made. Um, And there's been a lot of strife and obviously, you know, history of racism and uh, labor abuses, stuff like that. And, and, you know, recently we've seen some brutal, brutal, um, you know, retaliation against, uh, peaceful protesters in Washington, DC. Um, and you know, it's, it's a tough time to be thinking about it because so much is, you know, at stake with this election. And it's a very, very turbulent time for DC. Um, I will say flatly, D.C. should absolutely be a state. It is 100% ridiculous to me that it is still not a state and that no further progress has been made towards its statehood. Uh, And I hope that that changes uh, very quickly because I feel like there are people out there who are not uh, represented in the ways that they should be and they don't have the opportunity to make their voices heard. And because of that, they're overshadowed by the worst voices coming out of Washington, D.C. And I think that, um, you know, there's there's a lot of opportunity for growth if the people of Washington, D.C. are able to reclaim their identity and speak for themselves. Uh, So I'm hoping that a lot of progress can be made. Also, since we last recorded, or actually before then, but I'm thinking on it now, some of my very good friends have moved to Washington, D.C. or spent time there for college, um, and I miss them a lot, and I hope that they're doing well um, in these times. You know, it it, it seems like a place that I definitely want to go back and visit as an adult, because when I went there in eighth grade, uh, I was kind of too distracted by this the bullying uh you know that i was experiencing on our field trip and um you know just trying to have fun uh and goof around with my friends uh also my bunk mate threw up at the end of my bed and it was really oh, really oh. bad um now but, that's a smell segment mm, true uh it was it, it, it's a place that I think is really interesting. And I love that there are weird little gems like the, the spy museum. Um, but there is just like a lot of very, like very white, uh, history there, you know, literally like, uh, you know, in, in terms of the way that it was built up and in the way that it is standing today, you know, the buildings and the monuments are literally just drab white monoliths. And I think that there's so much more vibrancy that is within, uh, DC that, that is just aching to, uh, be exposed to the world. So I do hope that there's some change on the horizon here. Christopher. Um, you know, I love D.C. so much. You know, let the record show Anthony's only been to D.C. twice, once in eighth grade and once when he went to go visit AU. Um, I think that uh, <laughs> probably not not the best points in your life to be visiting anywhere. Uh, stay inside during those ages. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, D.C., I truly love it so much. Cleveland Park, my neighborhood, uh, one of the best place, the places I could have asked for to grow up. Um, I want to give a uh, quick uh, shout outs to some small businesses that are in DC. If you're a uh, Washingtonian, uh, I su- suggest uh, supporting some of my favorite businesses uh, that are uh, in the DMV, like Big Planet Comics, Phantom Comics, Med Fresh, Biblos Deli, Triple B Fresh, uh, Negrilla in uh, Silver Spring, Comet Ping Pong, uh, New Vegan Cafe, Golden Brown, and Delicious. And if you want to uh, go out and uh, really have, uh, you know, go for a nice dinner, go for uh, Elizabeth's Gone Raw. I don't know what they're doing during uh, COVID, but uh, those are all really nice. Uh, places to check out um so yeah dc love it it's uh it's 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 home were there any other uh you know were there any other points of contention that you had with trista's episode where you want to you know fire (laughs) back or or any other things that you any other things that you wanted to get out there yeah, clear the air. Uh, no, I think it's really just the the Lido's pizza thing that I think really oh, rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I also think that I just want I just want to say for any just uh, you know just disclaimer I should have said at the top for anybody listening at home you know 
uh, I can only say, I can only describe the DC that I know. And I know that uh, there's a, like you uh, sort of mentioned, Anthony, there's a huge black culture in DC that I really just don't know very much about because it's not part of uh, my bubble that I live in. And, you know, a lot of culture that I just don't have a personal experience with that I think uh, deserves a huge, um, just a, a amount of praise. I mean, so many great artists such as, um, you know, Shy Glizzy, Fat Trell, um, recently uh, Gold Link. Um, you know, there's so like, and like I said, you know, New, New Vegan Cafe is a really awesome black owned soul food, uh, all vegan uh, restaurant in uh Northeast, uh, there's a lot uh, that uh, the black community has to offer in Washington, D.C. that I think goes underappreciated. Stuart. Yeah, for my uh, touch segment, I actually just want to read some lyrics from, well, a little man known as T-Pain. Hmm. Her name was Cece from D.C. She knows how to go-go dance. When I see her, she sees me. We kind of got a little romance. I don't know about y'all, but she be throwing that thing on me. And every night in the club, I'm a B. Steady looking at that ass in the club like, go, go, baby, go, go, baby. Be leaving alone. Now that's a no-go, baby. You hit my phone. Now now that's a for sure go, baby. I take you for steak and lobster and froyo, baby. Steak, lobster, and froyo, baby is kind of what I want to focus on here. You know, three great things that if you I was to eat them all in one meal, I wouldn't be happy about. Um, you know, I think politics is a good thing. Democracy is a good thing. And there's a bunch of horrific people in it right now. And that sucks, you know? It's kind of like a, a bad lobster where you're like, ooh, look at that on the plate. And then you crack it open and what comes out? Just that green goo. You don't got no meat. It's just goo from the lobster. And I mean, how about the statehood thing? It's like, yeah, I mean, the the actual footprint of this place is very, very small. So part of me is like, yeah, OK, maybe I can understand this not being a state. But then you think about, wait, why are people against this? It's because so much of the population is is left leaning in terms of voters and then also people of color. Like the m- large majority of D.C.'s population is um, African-American people. And like the only reason that it is not a state is because Republicans don't want those people voting. And I think today on all days, as you stand in line again, and I hope you're much closer to the elementary school now wanting to cast your ballot, uh, just remember that there are folks in this country who desperately do not want you to have your voice heard and want to silence you and want you to feel as though you are the minority voice, you're a small voice, and uh, the majority is, is, is yelling over you so much louder. But just remember that they're so tiny. They're the small people. They're the ones who have to cheat. They're the ones who have to rig things because they know they can't win fair. And that's kind of how I feel about DC is that it has gotten like a really hard break for a long time and has not been treated fair, fairly. And I think the things that happen in it make it look worse than it is. I think it gets a bad stink because of what it's associated with. But I think where it is, is... It's American, you know, it's right there in the middle of those 13, those first 13 colonies. And it represents all of us. And I think it's a beautiful place, at least from my memories in eighth grade. I wasn't getting bullied there, but I do have really good, uh, really good memories associated with it. So D.C., keep bouncing up and down like a yo-yo, baby, because nobody around because nobody else around you can go, go crazy. I'm VIP status. Keep them doors closed, baby. Nice. Tim. Hmm. Washington, D.C. What do I have to say about Washington, D.C. other than the time that I went to Washington, D.C. for my cousin's wedding? And I explored the National Mall in but a three a brief three-hour trip with my uncle who was very racist to a taxi driver oh. upon leaving and really skimped him out on some money, and I really hated that. But um, you know what they say about something when you really don't have to say anything about it? Washington, D.C. war like Washington D's nuts, okay? <laughs> we got it. We got there, baby. Yep, we got there. So, if you have any questions or concerns about the great 50 states of the statesman, reach out to us on Twitter at statesmanpod, on Facebook and Instagram at statesmanpodcast, or by email at statesmanpodcast at gmail.com. You can like, rate, share the show with your friends, because that helps the show out a lot. And Christopher Isaacson, 
Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, man. And for listening too. Of course. Chris, if you're a listener, you know what this part of the podcast is all about. And it's about us kissing your little tookus. <laughs> and I, as as the one host who has certainly, you know, has, has experience with you and has gotten to perform with you a little bit and do silly stuff, um, I can say you're a genuinely very, very nice person. And you seem to be a little ray of sunshine whenever I see you. And um, I, I want to thank you for doing that. I, I think you're a... I think you're such a silly dude and I appreciate anyone who's able to be like, um, to, to bring levity to uh, a situation. And I think you're kind of the master at that. And also I think like, look, dude, you got a friggin' crazy Twitter. That thing's fucked yeah. up. It's so weird. It's so crazy and it's so you. And I encourage everyone out there to go take a peek. Chris, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, little baby boy. Yeah, I have to sneak in here and just say absolute dunk of a Twitter follow. You gotta, you gotta go hit the follow. So much fun to be had there from, you know, and obviously, you know, I'm someone who appreciates a good image manipulation and you, you <coughs> t do some photo work on your Twitter. That is, that is a force to be reckoned with. So yeah. you're super funny and, and just a great follow and just a great guy. So Chris, um, before you, uh, obviously, uh, you know, kiss us back. Uh, is there anything that you would like to plug or anywhere online people can find you? Uh, yes, uh, I'm at Chill Cute Boy on Twitter and uh, I'm not really active on Instagram, but it's the same ad if you want to follow. Um, and I want to just, uh, I think a fun announcement to share is that, you know, I, I've been taking a little bit sabbatical from uh, Twitter content recently um, and I'm taking some, uh, a little step back to, just think about my process a little bit more and, and my plan, and I hope that this will help uh, put it into action, is that I'm using this time to think of ideas. November will be my writing and shooting, and then I'm going to try and just shoot of like, you know, how many videos I come up with in like a weekend, and I am going to like roll them all out over December and January in like a sort of like a, a volume set. So um, I hope that anybody uh, who's listening, who is familiar with uh, my content or is interested in just, you know, seeing what I have to offer. It looks out for that. Wow. I mean, look, we learned about some of the greatest volumes of all time. Volume two, Weird Al Yankovic, Van Halen, Best of Volume One. So I'm sure Chris Isaacson's uh, new new Twitter video volume will be uh, insane and worth just as much money. So, uh, Tim, do you have anything you'd like to plug? You can follow me on Twitter at uh, infected butt, infected <laughs> underscore B-U-T-T. You can also follow me on Instagram, Young Garlic, Y U uh, Y U N G underscore Garlic. Anthony, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I'm a Rossi, and definitely go follow the Statesman Podcast on Twitter. It's at Statesman Pod. We it. need to get those fucking numbers up. Turn out for us. Come to the yeah. Twitter. We will only make it better the more faces we see, the more interaction we see. And, you know, it helps us get some damn good guests. True. Absolutely. And, and wait, real quick, because I didn't even get a chance to kiss back. I just want to say, uh, you know, this podcast is the best. And I used to work a really shit temp job. And I used to listen to it all the time during the day. And it made me laugh at my desk so much. And it also, whenever I listened to anybody like Trisha or anybody from neighboring states that I was familiar with just make an absolute horrible call with their opinions. <laughs> it made, made my day uh, so much better. Uh, and each one of you is a joy. Stuart, of course, I know you the best and your golden radio voice is often confused, honestly, with Tim's when I'm listening for the first few for times. Sure. Uh, but it is, it, this, and I feel like I, I don't really know you guys, but you know, I haven't listened to so much. I feel like I have a sense of who you all are, except for Camden. You don't really say that much. Maybe we'll get to know each other when you yeah, stay silent. Um, and wow. uh, uh, it's just such a joy. You're all so funny. Uh, Anthony, you always say the, the, the worst things, uh, pun wise, and it always makes me laughing. <laughs> uh, Tim, again, you sound like Stuart. I actually really thought that Stuart uh, was the one who did the intro on each episode, and to see you do it was uh, incredibly jarring, if I'm being honest. Uh, but uh, I love this show. I think anybody who likes podcasts, I think that you guys do a, a great thing, honestly, in that, like, I feel like I only ever want to click on a podcast if I know whoever's featured on it. And I think that this podcast works uh, without that. I think that it's such a well structured thing. So uh, you guys really wow. run a tight ship. So thanks wow. so much for being a guest. 
Thank you so much. Of course, no one could confuse my voice. It's the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. And I'll jump right off of that. Anthony has what we call a distinctive voice in the business. And if you'd like to follow me anywhere online, you can find me at Stuart Highcar, S-T-U-A-R-T-H-I-C-A-R, like you're saying hi to a car. Uh, Twitter is popping off right now. And of course, those Instagram videos that you've probably seen on CNN are real, but you have to follow me first if you want to see them. Uh, Camden, anything to plug anywhere people can find you online? Uh, Twitter and Instagram at Cam Stacy underscore C-A-M-S-T-A-C-E-Y underscore. I believe the week that this app drops, um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be staring down the barrel of uh, two brand new TYGKO songs that I produced. So... Look out oh for my that. God. Um, and you can follow him. Uh, he's my best pal, rapper, lyricist extraordinaire. You can follow him on Instagram at T-Y-G-K-O, on Twitter at T-Y-G underscore K-O. Um, that's all I got going on. Nice. Can't wait for those tracks. Some of the best music coming out of that house. And T-Y-G-K-O, friend of the podcast, friend of ours, and just a just a delightful guy. Absolute talent. I uh, can't wait to hear. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. It's way late. Um, on behalf of my junior statesman, Anthony Rossi and Stuart <laughs> Highcar, I'm your other statesman, Tim Ferrari. State positive. Jeff and Bo both have the last name Bridges. <laughs> DC, you later. Not letting over 200,000 black citizens uh, vote and give them equal voting rights and governmental representation, but letting them pick a famous black guy that they want to put on a quarter. Talk about tokenization. Whoa! Whoa. Okay. Wow. Stop. Gotcha.